Over-sexualize everything. Bye, guys. Fuck my wife. No. The chap. Fuck my wife. Suck a dog off. Bye, guys. Absolutely has sex with my wife. With my wife. Bye, guys. Sex with my wife. Oiled up. Slippery. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sex with my wife. Tyrone. Kevin. Kilmurray. Seven. My wife is squirting everywhere. Oil up. Sauce all over ass. Five guys. Absolutely has sex. With my wife. With my wife. Five guys. Sex. With my wife. Oil up. My wife. Look at my. Please suck my ass on diarrhea day, dog. Let me tell you something, brother. Suck it, suck it, suck a dog off. Suck it, suck it, suck it, suck a dog off. I tell you what I do. I suck a dog off. I tell you what I do. I suck a dog off. Let me tell you something, brother. Suck a dog off. Dog. Dog. Suck a dog off. Dog. Dog. Dog off. Dog. That's why he's. Look at Mark. Suck a. Suck a. Suck a dog off. Dog. Suck a. Suck a. Suck a. Suck a dog off. Dog. I tell you what I do. I suck a dog off. I tell you what I do. I suck a dog off. Dog off. Big ups uh, Lima Whiskey 7 for three months, dude. And big up Sunspot Gallery for the five uh, United States uh, contribution coins. United Kingdoms, my bad. That's right, this is the United States of Phil. I am the supreme being. I make the rules and what I say goes. Uh, this is now. It's gonna be the last song. Your soapbox and complain about censorship and freedom of speech. Because the bottom line is you don't have freedom of speech. This is my land. Control is desire. This desire.
desire. I don't think I've ever made him say the n-word in the song. If you're hearing the n-word in a in a little piggy song, it's probably not that. I just care about money. That I just can't help it. I'm so just enveloped in. Unless I forgot, or he said it. Money. Her take. Do what gives you pleasure and suck a dog on. Who? Oh, I was muted. I was muted. All right. Uh, welcome everybody. This is a uh, stream, and I have to flex a little bit. Finally, I have achieved my goal of fulfilling my setup. Now I have literally everything I wanted to get. Ever. I got a mic. I got a stand for the mic. I got a, a ring light. I got a screen. I got a HD camera. I got a PlayStation, I got a capture card, and I got a TV. I have everything now. And it, all of it works. And I spend the better part of today, like, three to four hours, setting up everything. And it fucking works. And I'm satisfied. So, I'm gonna be happy today. So, uh, let's, let's get into it. Let's do some quick catch-up with the guy. It's very hot outside. It's probably, like, 36, 38 degrees. And... So let's uh let's chill and relax with uh, the one and only the guy uh speaking of the guy he's still up for sale if you want to be the guy who owns the guy you can hit up the link in the description style box and prepare at least uh 4500 american dollar dues if you want to get a chance to be the guy with the guy all right big ups uh, now the first the, the first one I want to see is DSP playing against um, the Pay Pigs and uh, his uh, fellow Americans in Street Fighter Six. This is it, 
one of them is just great. The rest of them are kind of like, all right, the clips, but one of them is, is great because he quits and he drops the controller and then he starts looking at the camera smugly. And yeah, I, I got to find that one. We're going to start with that one because that's actual content. And he also had a, a, a segment about a cheeseburger that's just two buns and a bunch of cheese. And he looks very salty in the thumbnail. So let's actually start with this one because I'm, I'm curious. I want to see what this shit is all about. And at some point I might, uh, I might pop up the, um, no, no video here. Yeah, the, the capture card and test it out. Even though I've been testing it out and it works. So yeah, that's going to be a backup plan. So anyways, without further ado, actually there is further ado. Uh, big ups to Koraz EQ for three months membership, dude. Big ups. The chap is dull. There you go. Let me now let, let's see this one. This is a segment about a fucking cheeseburger. And if you know something about DSP, he loves cheeseburgers and burgers. I want another story. And fast food. And his wife. Today it's not gaming news. And five guys. It's and five guys all, also love his wife. So it's like a mutual thing. It's disgusting. Are you ready for the most revolting story you've ever heard of? Ladies and gentlemen, in Thailand, they have launched, get this, at Burger King. Burger. The real cheeseburger. Do you okay. know what this is? Have you heard about this yet? No. They have launched Tell me, a Phil. burger. Burger. Is literally, are you ready for this? <laughs> 20 slices of American cheese melted on a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the green screen. He completely vanishes. This, uh, him pointing the, the phone at the camera completely just confuses the camera so it doesn't know what to do. And it just green screens everything. And it just gets rid of him. So yeah, it's, it's, it's what you can see on the screen. It's just two buns and cheese. This is the real cheeseburger. Do you see it? The it's real cheeseburger. 20 pieces of cheese melted on a bun. Wow, that's crazy. No meat. Okay. No condiments. Just 20 pieces of cheese. Okay, are you mad about this? At this point, <laughs> I, why is he upset about this? They, this I, is not even. Where did he say this is in Thailand? Come on, dude, you're not even gonna see this. Not even Slayer is gonna send him a clip of somebody eating this because it's not even in Singapore. It's just in Thailand. At this point, I'm surprised. But he still carries that grudge with Burger King. The street side suicide booths from Futurama. The what? Did you ever see Futurama? No. They actually have a booth sitting on the street that you could walk up, pay money, walk in, it just vaporizes you instantly. Like, why don't they just have that? I'm, I don't even know. <laughs> Isn't that called Canadian healthcare? I thought that was a thing there. 20 pieces of cheese. You could just go to the store right now. And you could have a, you could buy the block of cheese from the store. It'll probably cost you between five and eight dollars American cheese, and you just go oh and eat it. Why do you need to go to Burger King and have it on a bun, right? Like it's it's just a lump of cheese. You could get okay. it right now. So it's again, this is just so stupid. But you can even... can't you also get one of these in in Burger King if you just walk in there and ask him for that and just say yeah instead of meat give me like twenty slices of cheese. Can't they just do that if you ask them? thinking that's first of all it's not a burger okay you know, a what burger is it implies it's some kind of a sandwich it's not oh really my god we get burger semantics again fucking burger semantics first of all it's not a burger remember when he got super salty about people calling a chicken burger a burger and not a chicken sandwich it's just a stack of cheese with two pieces of bun that's not a sandwich okay you know a sandwich should have a variety of things condiments veggies why though meat, something on it to have substance this has no substance it's a bunch of it's not cheese. meaningful <laughs> right it's not even a grilled cheese because the bun's not grilled. It's just oh cheese. Oh my god, the most obnoxious <laughs> human being. This is something that they serve like 5,000 miles from where he is. And then he's fucking salty about it. I just don't understand it. Like, he doesn't do we, understand how it. How do we find out that this, that, that this is something that people would want? And the sad part is you know people will buy it. Seriously. Why though? You know people are actually Why do you know people would buy it? I wouldn't buy this. It's just cheese and buns. I'm going to go buy that. Who is going to buy that? Because they're disgusting. They're disgusting. Over here to America. Why? Because they're Asian? I'm serious. Oh, we got them. We got them, you guys. Oh, we got another one. <laughs> they're Here's disgusting. Why would they be disgusting, Phil? Because people will buy that and eat it and get <laughs> sick. They're going to get You can't eat that much cheese and not get sick. Okay. You're going to go right to the bathroom. 
Well, we know he's gonna get sick because he's half lactose intolerant. So if he eats the whole cheeseburger, he's gonna get like half half sick. I don't know. It's very confusing. You're gonna be vomiting. And you're gonna be having a bad time. Which is what is really funny is that he is more lactose intolerant than he is Italian because he's a quarter Italian and he's half lactose intolerant. That's fucking great. This guy is unique. Bad way. It's that's disgusting and awful for you. Can you imagine? The amount of fat calories in that, the, you know what I mean? The amount of, oh God, that's the most horrible thing for you. Okay. Why are they, even, how, why are they allowed to sell it over there? Like, bro, like, have that, you seen how you look? You're, you're the last guy to be concerned about what is healthy. He spent like 10 years eating burgers and recording himself like three times a day. He was making burgers drunk at like 4 a.m. That seems like a health hazard, doesn't it? Come on, bro. Imagine if they sold a burger with a piece of broken glass in it. Oh, the, the glass burger. Ooh. The glass yeah, burger. Risk. It's a blood-filled adventure, right? <laughs> they do that? that was actually a, a have-good joke. I have to say that. It was a, it was well-delivered. Yeah. I mean, this is the equivalent. There really is. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's really disgusting. No, I'm not trying it. If it comes to the United States, that's the okay. last thing I would ever eat. So don't even get the idea. There's no absolutely no way I'm staying away. Okay. Glass isn't edible. Neither are 20 pieces of cheese at once. Yeah, they are. Why not? If you eat 20 pieces of cheese at once, you're poisoning your body. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, I, I guess. I guess. If he's saying it, then it's right. I trust him. I'm not going to eat that burger. Even though it's never going to come here and I, I wouldn't be interested. But yeah. What is this about? Oh, the... What? He... He had some baby fit over Final Fantasy 16. Let's check this out. He tells viewer, get the fuck off my stream. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> here's, a, here's a fun part. Here's a fun part. You, you guys are going to laugh. This is going to be really funny. Let's, uh, let's wait in anticipation of the punchline. Someone named Factually Correct just said, well, any good streamer can play a bad game, but make it entertaining for the audience. That's true, yeah. So you mean like when I play Final Fantasy 16 and it's getting kind of boring. But he does the inverse, right? He plays good games badly and it makes it entertaining for a different audience, which is also a talent by itself because not everybody can make a, a Neil Breen or a Tommy Wiseau movie. So I kind of start cracking jokes and making fun and then everyone complains. Oh, why are you doing this? You're not taking it seriously enough. Why? No. You're absolutely right. A good streamer can entertain their audience, but I'm not allowed to because anything I He's do not is allowed to. is incorrect by my idiotic hater. What? The hate watchers. Bro, you're the guy who cares about your uh, playthroughs being meaningful and valid. Not anybody fucking else. So you put those... Uh, you, you set the bar for yourself. Say no matter what I do, it's bad. So I don't give a fuck. I will play Final Fantasy 16 and enjoy it however I want. If I want to, well, you obviously it, give will. a fuck. You're crying so about what? it. Back in the day, I could crack as many jokes as I fucking wanted, and everyone was fine with it. Today, no matter what I do, it's wrong. So fuck those people. Fuck I don't give a you. Fuck about them. Get I'll the fuck off my, my stream. Pace. I'll enjoy the game how I want to play it. If you don't want to be along for the ride, that's perfectly fine. But hey, if you want to join me for a fun summertime blockbuster kind of ride, and you're not taking it too seriously, come to the Final Fantasy 16 streams. You'll get that out of it. You will. Just stop listening really? to idiots constantly whining and complaining about every little thing that happens on a stream, and maybe you'll have a good time. Stop listening to the nitpicky idiots who just want to say everything. Oh, uh, bro. Yeah. Because the thing is, these other big streamers... I mean, that's the thing, right? When he brought up nitpicking. You can nitpick anybody's gameplay and make fun of it on a like a moment-to-moment -moment basis, but with DSP, it's just more fun than anybody else. Because... With him is actually worth it because he gets worked up over that shit. Because if I start playing games and you nitpick my gameplay and you point out how stupid I am, yeah, I am. And it, it's not going to be as funny as with DSP because he's going to actually get butthurt over it and he's going to cry a lot. But all those other streamers, like even the pros, you can nitpick their gameplay even when they're bad, but it's, it, it's not really going to get to them that much. Don't do much different for me, but they're not hated on with a big mentality of memeable bullshit like memeable I, bullshit because you're like you are the meme it's not the games really one has to meme that feels sucks well fuck you actually watch it fairly objectively and tell me how bad my streams really are yes because all you do is you sit there and you nitpick and you, you judge me differently than everyone else so i don't give a fuck about what those idiots say it's time to shut up about it i don't care about them <clears throat>
What? So he wants... Okay. He wants you to look at his streams objectively and tell him that they're bad, but you can't because you just nitpicking. I, I'm lost. Oh my god. Anso Kamaro, you really need to start maybe being more concise. I'm not even kidding you. Anso Kamaro tipped a dollar. Are you ready for this? Okay. From Anso Kamaro, I 100% agree with you. Normal difficulty is far too easy and you don't need to use every skill to win, but my point is the combat is fantastic at its core. Using your Street Fighter 6 example from earlier, imagine the- Oh my god. Game. Oh my god, dude. Dude. Is this a, a fucking tip that he's reading so fast? Back at you. Wow, that's so respectful. And now, now he's gonna take a deep breath and read it fast again because, yeah. I called you a blind fanboy. Yeah, you see. Match fest and all you need is one combo to win. It's the worst. Yeah, ever. yeah, Five yeah. It's so fucking patronizing and smug. That, and you think anyone trying to have a discussion with you is on an attack? Nobody's trying wow. to hate on you. People are saying that you cannot call a battle system. Wow, dude! Please, a round of applause for a guy who can very fast, very quickly read the only language he knows. Amazing, Phil. Amazing. Great fucking job. You are so good at the only language you've ever learned, and you happen to use words in the wrong way constantly. So, congratulations. It all has elements to make a battle system good. You can say that it's on your table, but you cannot say that anyone who's complex fanboy skills is feeling fanboy. Bars. That's what I'm talking about! Literally didn't say any of that. Again, this is from your perspective of your tunnel vision. I'm serious. Like, I'm not... You have the right. What is Tunnel Vision, bro? That that dude is a pay pig. He's literally like a, a DSP fan. Anzo Kamaru, dude. He's been in DSP's chat for like years. Right. To say a game is one thing, you do. Oh my what god. What I'm saying is when I tell you it's something else, and then you say, oh no, you're wrong, it's this. That's completely stupid. What? <laughs> you're completely stupid to disagree, fucking I'm idiot. Right. To say something about a game and have someone, you know, respect their opinion I no 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 nobody's entitled to their opinion being respected because sometimes it's stupid and you shouldn't respect it respect your opinion come on dude he makes his living on the internet and people that make their living on the internet usually know that on the internet there's a lot of stupid opinions that shouldn't be respected yeah you should have the platform to say those opinions but if they're stupid you're not entitled to any kind of respect that you're saying if you play Final Fantasy 16 in a certain way, it plays like Devil May Cry and it's more fun. Fair enough. Okay. What I'm saying is, you don't have to play it that way. It's too easy to play. And the only... Why don't you bump up the difficulty? The person who would write off my opinion is someone who has this tunnel vision fanboy mentality and won't listen to reason. Right? We can all enjoy games that... I, we just had this discussion with Zelda. But now, look. Now he's saying that his opinion is, is reason and listening to reason. So his opinion is objectively right. So his opinion is fact, basically, isn't it? I can streamline my right? playthrough and play for 50 Dude. hours. You can spend 100 hours in Zelda. We okay. can have different experiences, but still agree to disagree and still enjoy the game. So what's the argument here exactly? Besides the fact that I keep getting told that... I don't know, bro. You can't have arguments with people when they get to respond with a message in chat, and you get to respond with a five-minute segment of you talking and creating straw man. That's not how arguments and discussions are dealt and exist. That's not how any of this works. My opinion's invalid. You literally can't have this. Every time I play Final Fantasy 16, oh I'm playing it badly, and my playthrough's boring. I didn't make the fucking game. I'm just playing it. No, you didn't make the game. You made it boring. That's kind of the point. At face value, like I do with every game I've ever played. I literally just had someone in the chat say, save all your criticisms till you beat the game. Are you mad? What? You want me to keep my mouth shut and sugarcoat every playthrough and say everything's no. fucking dory until the credits fucking roll, then drop a criticism bomb on you? I Well... I guess, if that's what your review's gonna be. Where to God people have problems I... today. What? That's the people that like you and your videos. You should probably not say stuff like that, even if they have problems. Dude, what is going- Because they do! Going on. Do you not want anyone in life to be honest with you? Do you want everything to be rainbows and unicorns and everyone to save the truth from you? Is that what it is? You want to live a nice sheltered life? Why has DSP been talking about Final Fantasy 16 and Zelda for the two weeks non-stop? <laughs> Is this normal to dedicated 100s of hours to addressing viewers? Yes, now it is. And this is like the, the two games that most recently he's been talking about non-stop. Because I guess he had some slow streams, and I guess because Zelda really pissed him off, because he went viral on TikTok. And then, 
you know people told him that he was playing it wrong because he was skipping content and then he tried to tell you that skipping content is actually better than playing the content it's a long story and you can see it's a long story because he has like hours worth of segments like like you said in your message about zelda and final fantasy 16. so i guess that's that's the new thing he's gonna just bitch about games everything's perfect and great like for like long periods of times but what what i really like is that recently he's been focusing his toxicity more on his own viewers and people that like him as seen in this segment as opposed to trolls because like what else is there for him to say about trolls they're fucking idiots they're mentally ill they need to get professional help and they're they smell like potatoes or fucking something where do you what planet do you they smell like the doo-doo fucking live on how do and they should suck turds out of his ass i forgot that one that that one is great where did we go from 10 to Pick up synonymous for the dollar where i could literally make fun and lampoon a game every moment i played it and it was funny and great and everyone thought that was great youtube gaming gameplay and now today but i said on. one criticism about a game and i'm told save that for the credits you're ruining the game uh well didn't he say back in the day that was a character i'm, I'm pretty sure he did, obviously, and he didn't My like doing the character. Just beat Tears of the Kingdom with zero complaints. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you could do that. But also, you know, your nephew is playing it for fun, and he is playing it to get through it and to get it off the conveyor belt so he can put the next, the next game on the conveyor belt. He's not really playing it for fun. Obviously, he's trying to convince himself that he has passion in this and that it's meaningful. Otherwise, what the fuck did he spend 15 years on? Nothing. A bunch of shitty Let's Plays that don't get any views. Speaking of this, let's uh, let's give a quick check um, to his channel and do what I call a channel audit. What is he doing today back from break? Let's try out Luke. I am not interested. So here we got... Oh, the, the, the viewer lobbies. Those got nice views. Before that... I mean, like, look at this, man. Look at this. Triple digits. I don't know what was the last one where... Oh, yeah, it's the finale of Zelda has 1,500 views. And it's the most viewed video in the last, like, I don't know, probably like five days. And he's been circling the drain. When it comes to views, it's been, it's been pretty bad. It's been pretty bad. And it took him, yeah, 49 parts to beat... Zelda 49 parts which are like what one hour each so I guess like 49 50 hours maybe 53 4 which I think is kind of average so in in this aspect he beat it in in time oh my god oh my god here's what you need to do get I get the it fuck too. off my stream retreat to your safe space what get off public streams if this is your problem retreat to your big streamer safe space where everyone just kisses every game's ass. Yes. Right? Go there and leave the rest of the human populace <laughs> alone. We can actually deal with mature themes like what? criticism. Like sex? Or commentary. We can joke about- Mature themes like criticism. Says the guy who screeches against people who make fun of his gameplay videos on the internet. Are you serious? ...about a game and understand that just because someone's joking about it doesn't mean that they hate the game. And he's also a guy who can't handle literal pixels pretending to have sex. And it's not even graphic. It's not even a sexual game. They just kind of have some foreplay and then that's it. And he, he goes on like five minute rants about it. What is this insanely immature black and white mentality that either sucks or it's great? That's not life. Get the fuck off my stream if this is what you're dealing with. Fuck Seriously, off my stream. Your brain has not matured past a, a fifth grade level. If this is how you're thinking, like what is going on here? <laughs> Oh, I love him when he goes like this, cause it's it's like, uh, like like Steve said yesterday on the, the that being said thing, it's like there's layers to it, and when you step back for a second, you start thinking about, oh yeah, this is a 41 year old man like screaming at the internet. Oh, but this is a 41 year old man screaming at the internet about video games. Oh, this is a 41 year old man screaming at the internet about video games because somebody thought that his gameplay was bad. And then you can keep going and it gets even more ridiculous. It's like a fucking onion. Except it doesn't make you cry, it makes you laugh. Holy shit. I know, of course, what's hilarious is 
I wasn't talking to Anso Kamaru. I was talking to the person who said the nonsense in chat and said, wait till the credits to criticize a game. Yeah, everyone is now yelling at Anso Kamaru saying that I told them to go to leave the stream. I didn't even do that. I was talking to the other person <laughs> fucking stupid and trying to cause drama like usual. You know, immature idiots. So Immature idiots like usual. Why are they in your chat? Like usual. I usually have immature idiots in my chat. Okay. Um, I'd like to end the pre-stream only because I do want to take a break to use the restroom and I want to jump into Street Fighter 6 and get gameplay in. So let's right. end the show, shall we, everyone? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the podcast and my usual ranting nature. And uh, the usual yeah, ranting nature. Now, is that a selling point now? And again, we get this fucking awesome slide. Is this a selling point? Tune into my podcast so I can rant and be angry at stuff that don't matter because I am mature. I guess. I do look fancy, yes. I showered right before the stream. I hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's shower day today. Obviously. Oh, what else we got? The DSP versus viewer stuff. The master... Oh, yeah, this is this is the one. This is the one where he drops the... Well, let me he, he drops the controller. Like on the stream, a super chat, a membership, or a gifted membership, or a tip. Thank you in advance to anyone who supports today's stream. Here we go. All right, everyone. It's our first ever fan viewer lobby tonight. We're first ever fan? Goes. Oh, yeah, that already, didn't go well. Doing everything wrong. Oh. Yeah. It's because I switched characters. Now I'm trying to remember what to do with, with Marisa. I don't remember. I don't remember anything that you're supposed to be doing with Marisa. And there you go. He got clapped. I'm just going to find that Luke. Because that, that's where the real salt comes in. <laughs> and the rest of it is is probably him just losing to guys. But the, the one that I know about is the Luke. Because that, that shit is hot. Oh, and zero dropped frames so far. That is uh, very positive. Uh, is is it this one? Yep. Yep. Master. Let's uh, let's see this one. I can't really add any meaningful commentary, so I'm just gonna play some sound bites. Oh, he threw right through it. Okay, so far, no, no toxicity, which is remarkable. But keep in mind, this is a fan of his. Or is it? Slurms? Slurms McKenzie. Hmm. That's interesting. I've seen a detractor that was called Slurms. And it's another, another but I, I can't confirm. Another character. Just another one. So it... It might be a troll. Hmm. Hmm. No. Oh, you don't see the health bars. Why not? Hold on. Yeah, I don't know what to do. I have no clue what to do with this character in the. Alright, that should do it. No idea what to do. <laughs> Zero. I haven't played with him in so long. I don't know anything to do in the corner. Oh, and of course, the, the excuse is, man, I, I, I haven't played with him in so long. Why not just say fucking GG, dude? Just say GG and move on. That's that's all you got to do. And then the trolls are going to be seething. They're going to be mauling. Because they expected you to rage and you didn't. Oh, he's about to get perfected. Ah. Oh. oh no, he didn't. Barely. Barely though. He got like one oh, shot oh, in. Everything. Great. Okay, now now That's this is gonna be the one. Kicks, not punch. Okay. And now he just gives up. Look at him. Look at him. He just quits. You think you realized I stopped playing? Well, probably not, because you were dog shit last round as well. And you only got one hit in, so probably he didn't even notice. Probably. And this is like the most piss baby, loser, pathetic way to, to lose at a game, especially at a competitive game. You just drop the controller and you're like, yeah, yeah, beat me up, man. Yeah, beat me up.
Beat me up. Come on. Oh, you beat me up. There you go. It's so disrespectful to somebody who's rightfully beating your ass. <laughs> it's not like he was even anywhere near equal. He was losing by a lot the whole place. Like, dude, I mean, you do you. Keep doing it. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do anything. I don't know how to play with Dallas. Okay. Oh, he doesn't know how to play with him. Master rank stood there. And I'm not even going to play. What's the point? I don't know what to do. You don't want to play? Time. Why don't you just turn off the game then? He doesn't want to play. <laughs> Wow, that was really impressive. The guy doesn't want to play, dude. Okay, now let's play someone else. Wow, that wasn't... Wasn't it impressive? Why wasn't it impressive? This guy's supposed to be a former pro. He used to be one of the best. He's won countless EVO qualifiers somewhere in the fucking bumfuck East Coast Connecticut something. It's pretty impressive if a random dude just drops in your lobby and beats your ass and claps your cheeks and then leaves you fucking standing there. Yeah, it's a former EVO champion, except he wasn't a champion, but by semantics, he was. If you remove all the Asian dudes, he was the winner. Some people just don't get it, I guess, right? Gee, let's see. They don't get it. Playing random characters tonight in a casual environment with his viewers. Let me pick my master level Luke and try hard my way to victory. I mean, no okay. Oh, okay. It's a competitive game. Proving. What exactly did you just prove? I'm Bro, not just shut the fuck up, play. dude. Who cares? You just wasted everyone's time. He keeps going, man. You could have just shut up and just played the other dude. He's wasting everyone's time. Your own, like an idiot. He's wasting everyone's time. And he just called him an idiot. And he calls him an idiot in the end. This guy is fucking ridiculous. Could have just shut the fuck up and moved on, played the other dude, and then that's it. But he just attracts even more attention to the fact he trash. Stream. Lose with grace, ignore uh, the hate. Thank you. And then Slayer did a super chat saying, well, why shouldn't people be able to use their best main? Well, here's the point, Slayer. Here's the point. He's going to tell you what the point is, and he's going to tell you what to do, because he is uh, the guy, I guess. To me playing this game recently, even with as much as I have played, and as good as I've gotten with a character like Blanca, I'm not master. This dude is a master level loop. Literally, okay. this guy has played the fuck out of this game in the last month. And the whole point of viewer lobbies is not to play your best and try to dominate with your upper echelon character. Why like, not? I'm varying between characters. Don't you want to win? Why would you play Street Fighter if you don't want to win? Well, what's the point? I guess, yeah, the point is for him to make a lobby and for him to beat your ass and then power trip on you, knowing that he's better than his audience, but it doesn't really work out like that. You see, I'm picking freaking Thalcine. Okay. A character I don't even really know how to use. I'm just trying to learn. There's literally doesn't no... Doesn't even know, dude. ...in him going super try hard tonight. There's nothing to prove. It doesn't matter oh. if he beats me. DSP is playing loot today. Rent free low. Oh, yeah, he is. Um, I've been told he hasn't been playing any of the hot chicks. You know, there was a uh, jury, the, the foot lady, and um, the, the other one with the nice ass. I'm not even using my best character. Cammy. It's just a waste of there time. you go. You know what I mean? Like, here we go. Everything hits me. Everything. But, but that's because he's married, obviously. Why did I play? That's like cheating. Using a woman in a video game, that's cheating, dude. Come on. Like, we might as well reset the five minutes that we wasted with that guy. He kind of missed the whole point of, of a player lobby. He did. You he know? missed the this point. Is tournament. If this is a tournament, fine then. If you want to freaking play with, uh, with your, your, your crazy ass Luke. Okay, dude, shut up, man. He's so obnoxious. I don't know how to use. Okay, not only did, did he just become your dad and he clapped your cheeks like a little bitch, but you also cried. So you gave him even more satisfaction for beating your ass because you're crying about it now. Wait, it really is just... Oh my god. Go. I got the drip. Go. Uh, and if it was casual, then why was he so butthurt about it? Just get stomped by the guy and just move on. If it's so casual, you don't care about it. Uh, and yeah, the Jasper attacking DSP, I saw this one the other day. That was something. He had a um, disinfection break. A disinfection break. God damn it. Oh, and I think, yeah, that might be it. There's more salt and rage, but it's all kind of the same thing. And, uh, wait, hold on. What? We, we got another segment of him shitting on somebody. Is this on the podcast? I we did something completely new and different. I made my first ever viewer lobby. Is he salty in the daily rap? Uh, okay, let's see this. I created a lobby. 
I password protected it, and people who were on the stream had the password and were able to see it and join. And I played oh, probably we got 20 people one. tonight, I would think. A good amount in the two and a half hours that I played. I played a lot of characters, and that was good to get the character variety. And the thing is, I switched my characters almost every match. So tonight I used Marisa, Lily, Dalsim, Zangief, E Honda, uh, Ryu, and Blanca. I think those were the seven characters who I actually used tonight, and it was fun. To oh yeah, so um, he didn't play Jade, even though Jade wanted to play him, and which I think is pretty stupid. If anything, you should play somebody as as loyal to you, and you know somebody who hangs out in your chat literally every day. You should give him a shot, even though Jade is obviously he's disabled. He's not very good at the game because we've seen his footage. And then Jade's mom <laughs> went on Twitter to defend him, but then people told told her that DSP is really not a, a positive or nice place to let your, your kid hang out. And she is considering finding a different streamer that Jade is going to watch. This is something that really happened. Like, actually, it happened. Actually. It actually happened. Actually, for real. In reality. I'm going to try and find it. You know, and to have that variety of characters in a non-serious environment. And what I mean by that is, you know, I wasn't necessarily trying as hard with... You know, I, like, I didn't pick Blanca and fucking try to win every time. That's stupid. What's the point of me picking my best character and just doing try hard against my viewers? I want to have casual fun with them. They're, they're viewers of all different skill levels. They're not players who are all, you know, diamond master ranking. So, you know, I was playing around and had a good time, honestly. All right, there it is. There it is. And I'll let the TTS speak. So uh, it all starts with this, right? With Jade... He is begging to play. He really wants to play Phil. Phil is his idol. Jade is living for this. Also, shout out to Adam22 for trending, I guess. For being a cuck. Uh, and it, anyways. And then, this is allegedly his mom. I can't really verify that. But I, I, I'm pretty sure it is. And then Jade says, at DSP Gaming, please pay you. Which I understand by, he's gonna pay him to play him that's that's what i mean he was so desperate to play he really wanted to play and then we got shelly who says the following thank you jade is a vulnerable adult who has found a group of people that accept him he is a repeated target and is frequently harassed by those who do not like dsp i hope their attacks against a disabled person help them achieve the social justice they think is deserved right uh, I don't know why people troll Jade. Uh, I guess it's because he's a DSP fan, but in general, he's one of the, the DSP fans that is completely innocent. He never ever did anything. He's not a degenerate, and he's not harmful to anybody. So I understand her here. She doesn't know anything about the guy, obviously. Uh, then we got Peace of Peace, right? The fact that you're encouraging your vulnerable adult child to form such a deep parasocial relationship with someone who is not only an objectively bad person but whom is also benefiting financially from said relationship says more about you than anything else to be honest. All right, and this hits her with a ratio, right? This is a, a ratio. You pull out the ratio card and then she's like... Oh! Uh, and then she responds with this. The fact that you think you know anything about me is more pathetic than all of this bullshit. No one on DSP's chat, except you tyrants, have ever made fun of him. You claim DSP makes fun of people, but look what you are doing to my son. Congratulations, you have gone full circle. <laughs> and, uh, of course people are pretty pretty nice to her in the in the things trying to tell her that dsp is not really the guy you want to be leaving your kid to be watching and i want to find her follow-up because it seems like they actually made her consider uh exploring uh other streamers that she can uh, that jade can watch right which is uh where is that oh yeah there is a oh yeah lefty lefty Shout out to the Taken L's channel. Uh, he assembled a list of streamers that are better than DSP. So he's got a pretty good list of people that he would recommend. And it's, it's as follows. You can see him here. And he replies to this. Uh, to, to this post with the list. And she says thank you. Right? Then, Gamer Phase Gaming. One of the, the quality 
Twitter content creators, right? He says this. Jade deserves better. You could try watching a couple of. At Maximilian underscore. Two. What? Okay, so yeah, you can you can go check out Maximilian, right? And this is uh, one of the final ones I wanted to show you, which is... Thank you for this information. Providing Jade with a healthier alternative is exactly what I am looking for. It is not easy to be wrongly accused and attacked when I am striving to do the best I can. I sincerely appreciate your help. There you go. Uh, so maybe... Maybe Jade is gonna be freed from the the shackles of being a DSP fan and he can be a fan of a positive and wholesome streamer instead. So there you go. We will see. We shall see. I appreciate all of your comments. I am glad I have finally found the names of the people responsible for harassing my son. Have a great day. I don't know who they are. Where are the people harassing his son? What? <laughs> Who are they? Give me a list. Show them to me. And there's like, there's a lot here. And uh... <laughs> this is a great image, bro. They posted the at time go image. I fucking love this one. And then she responded with, okay. Bro, they posted the it time go. So anyways, you can you can go read through this. It's a it's a Twitter shit flinging competition. And you know, in a competition like this, all that matters is who can fling the more shit. And you already know. So yeah, I'll, I'll let you go and have a little bit to read if you feel like it. But that was that was the the, the Jade story, I guess. So I hope he I don't know. He finds a healthier alternative, as his mama says. Now, a couple things. Number one, yes, there was trolling, but it was controlled. It wasn't a big deal. Number two, it was controlled there were way more trolling. People that wanted to join. Each lobby could only hold sixteen people, and there's nothing I can but do. But you know, about you know how DSP is gonna spin this. He's gonna say Jade was trolled so hard that he had to be a fan of. Uh, he had to stop being a fan of mine just so they could leave him alone, and then he would encourage the other ones. Uh, the the people that are left he's gonna send them to the trenches again he's gonna send them to the front lines with a face like this and of course i pause when he's licking his lips because that's that's what he does so yeah he's gonna send them and say you you need to call this behavior out we need to stop this you know what am i gonna do yeah i'm, I'm gonna sit here and play video games and you can go to the trenches sound good also, the, the process to join, I guess what happens is once I create the lobby, you search for it per the code that I give you, and you'll find lobbies of that code you can join. But I, I don't know how the process works. Honestly, if he becomes a detractor, it's going to be hilarious. It's going to be fucking awesome. Works. I don't know how smooth It's going to be the most wholesome face turn ever. It is. There were people tonight who wanted to join and were trying all night and couldn't get into the lobby. And I'm like, you know, I... Yo! For that. I really what is up with the fucking bolt spot, bro? There were people tonight who wanted to join and were trying all night and couldn't get into the lobby. Look at this. And I'm like, you know, I apologize for that. I really don't know how to fix that process Man. because I didn't make it. It's Capcom's process. I don't know if there's a way to streamline it or make it easier for everyone. I, I did what, what was explained to me as a way to do it, and people seemed to like it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Good time. Lost a lot, but won a good amount as well, Um, which is fine. Although I will say this. Oh, yeah. Okay, now is, is salt. I think one or two people didn't get the point. Like They, they didn't, didn't get the point. Absolute Best one guy came in master rank loot. Okay, I'm using Dalsim, who I don't even know how to use. Okay, the guy just does master rank loot, just constantly just punch me in the face. I can't even move because I don't know how to use Dalsim. So he's just, I'll just, I'll just okay. be a bully Phil. <laughs> that, that, that's a good sound, bud. Uh, that kind of sounds like a skill issue and your problem. So I don't know why this is anybody else's problem but yours. And he just keeps punching me in the face, and I'm like, what's the point? Like, there's nothing fun here. It would be one thing if I was using my Blanca and we were doing a high-level serious match. Okay. Dude, I picked... Why don't you have a rematch with him? Why, why not do that? If you're so sure that's gonna happen. Play him!
Falcine, Play him again. Worst, one of my worst characters. I'm gonna gonna bully go Phil. Or try hard mode with master level Luke punching me in the face the entire round like a punch. Okay. Like, what was the point of that? This isn't a ranked match. It was supposed to be a fun casual match where people are playing and having fun. This isn't a tournament level match. So it's hilarious. I'm like, I'm just gonna stop playing. Like, what am I gonna do? Let's let's let him beat me up as fast as possible so we can just get on to more fun matches. So I did, and then it would have been just as fast as you, if you kept playing, but you wouldn't have looked like a bitch. It would have been just as fast, because that's what happened the previous round. Everyone was like, well, why'd you do that? Because I'm not going to do anything with Dalsim. I don't even know how to use him. I'm, I'm doing basics, trying to learn. And this guy just takes it upon himself to act like a try-hard idiot and doesn't get the point, of, of apparently, of viewer matches. He just thinks, he doesn't oh, get the point. top-level play hard. It's not. You're supposed to not try hard. So this is the Street Fighter of friendship. You're supposed to be buddies, not even punch each other. You're not even supposed to fight. Especially when you know... It's Street Lover. Street Lover 6. It's great. You just kiss and, and hug. Oh, I'm not picking Blanca. I mean, it's really stupid. But for the most part, people got it. We had fun. It was a good variety of matches tonight. <clears throat> and people want me to do it again. I don't know when I'll do it again. I would say probably maybe middle of next week. Maybe on night we'll do it. You know, I was thinking maybe like Sunday night, Monday night. Maybe we'll do it again uh, for variety purposes. All right? We'll see. But it went well. Okay. I'd like to try it again. And by the way, thank you to those who did support it. Because at first, support was very slow. And then and what like, happened? Guys, you know, I really want to do this. I like... What is like, two whales showed up and gave him like a hundred bucks? Is that what happened? Giving back to the fans. Let's uh, let's actually check it out. Oh, and he's giving back to the fans. That's, that's pretty fucking awesome. He's the king of giving back. That's why he rants about charity on a consistent basis. Uh, let's see this one. So this is part two, right? Let's see how part one ends. Okay, so we have um, we have a twenty by Game Tracker, and we have eleven more by other people. So I'm not. I'm barely picking block. I picked the Then we have. All Phil had to do was compliment the guy and rally the dance to help him learn. Easy dollar happy Friday. Yeah, bro. That's it's so fucking simple. Just say, hey, good job, man. All right, you beat my ass. Okay, let's move on. That's it. So uh, here we end at 66, the first part, which is for a night stream. Was this a night stream? I think it was. For a night stream, it's, it's pretty all right. Uh, he's going to tell you it's slow, but it's pretty all right. He regularly has streams that are less than this. And then it ends at like, what, 81? There's no way for me to invite anyone because all my... I mean, yeah, it's 81. That's not... It's not even like any crazy support. Message stuff is shut down and I can't open it up. The moment I do, I start getting... And he's complaining. Shit, friend request. Oh, is this the Jade part? Hold on. Because uh, he's talking about why he can't add him as friends. Because he's going to get trolled. Nicely done. Bobby, sorry to those... Play. I knew there would be people who wanted to play and couldn't get in. I would say for it's good for a first attempt. But I don't know possibly how to make it any better. Problem being, there's no way for me to invite anyone because all my message stuff is shut down and i can't open it up everything is shut I down start getting spammed with messages and shit friend requests like if you remember day one when i played yeah yeah okay okay we don't need this long-winded explanation is he still doing shorts no oh no i think he actually is no he's not hold on this is from when this is from like oh 16 hours ago so this is uh pretty recent let's see this piece of shit Keith the last in this league is never getting too high when we win. He never gets too low. <laughs> Bro, the, the fucking the 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 dubs in the old 2K games are phenomenal. When they got actual players to do this, they're phenomenal. Did you just say? The key to have a top of this league is having him to have the head, the head to have a top of the So was this supposed to be like funny? Does it mean anything? <laughs> of course it means something. It means I need and that was it. That that was it. This is so stupid, man. And let's see this one. This one looks like it has fantastic lighting. This is the first frame. You get the serial killer face. <laughs> and now he's gonna he's gonna li live it up. It's gonna be oh, what's up, you guys? Oh, here are my thoughts on what I thought. So I just finished five plus <laughs> hours of Final Fantasy 16 here on release day, and I wanted to share some of my initial thoughts. First of all. Its performance on PS5 does leave something to be desired. Even on performance mode, the frame rate is dipping a lot. Uh, at the same time, oh, it's man. never really so jarring that it really bothers me or makes it that the game's unplayable. But it's why are we seeing him 
up close like this. Look at the snort sacks. Look at how good they yeah, are. Again, we can't hit a solid <laughs> 60 frames. <laughs> okay, yeah, fuck off. This shit is trash. Let's see what else we got. Um, another polished AAA experience. I don't know who decided to put his face cam as like circles. It doesn't work. It's not good. And I don't really see many people on TikTok or Instagram put their face cams like this. It it just doesn't really work. Oh, this is the one with the sleepy gamer. This is when he falls asleep and it's supposed to be hilarious. I can't really fit it on the whole All screen. Right. Sounds like a plan. Nah. Sounds like nah. Let's see what's on podcast. Yeah, we got the daily wrap. Day end summary. Are there 500 of those? It's almost like yesterday when he started doing those. They're 500. Look at all this garbage. My God. But they start from 200. Hmm, that's Good very day, suspicious. Hold on. Daily wrap for what was Hold on. Good How can I see all of them? Because uh, there's, there's like 200 and something that have been deleted, I would assume. But I'm not sure. Hey, big ups to Kenneth Douglas for three months, dude. And they say, wow, goob. Three months already? Big ups to everyone. Big ups to you, Mahomes. No. Um, then what do we have in the podcast? Really nothing else. It's all dog water. But... It's basically, I can't, it's not like I'm taking a night off. It has to be like a normal stream. So then some people actually were like, oh shit, and they actually contributed. It was very nice. I was like, it went pretty good. So I got no complaints there either. You know, no overall, complaints. everything went pretty well. You know, yeah, it's not perfect. There's some trolling, but who cares? Just brush that off, continue to play the fans, have a good time. And I felt like we did. So good stuff tonight, everyone. Everyone who are participated, I'm sorry for those who tried and couldn't get in. That's not your fault, obviously. I mean, there's so many people trying to get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got this. Uh, let's do some of the React stuff. And um, I guess DSP React is the place we go for that, even though nobody else does. What is up with these thumbnails? Why are they so ugly? Why are they so bad? Who makes them? All these questions that arise in my head. And I'm just confused because they're terrible. Like, you're, you're, you want to convince somebody to click on this and watch a 30 minute video with this? It's not going to work. No, that's, that's not how life works. So what do we have here based on the on the titles? We have loudest sound ever buying a house for $16 and paradoxes. I'm I'm not really sold. Looks stupid. Members Q&A, making breakfast, crowdfunding versus preachers. Wow. Let's let's check Everyone, this shit thank out. Thank you so much for watching DSP versus the internet this week. Wow, why why is he tweaking right off the bat? He's so fucking hype. What's up with him? Everyone, thank you so much for watching DSP versus the internet this week. This is episode 21 for July 9th, 2023. I hope you're enjoying the show. Now, this is. Yeah, members are not doing good. The members are like 74 in that channel. They used to be over 100. Part five. In this but after the initial hype and steam of the channel wore out, it's been. It, it's been down ever since. Uh, looking at the views is not very positive. Honestly, it makes me feel kind of bad. Uh, but it's DSP, so I can't. Uh, and we got basically the same amount of views he gets on the gaming channel. And that shit's been dead for a long time. And this is supposed to be the hype channel. Uh, yeah, there's there's this one. DSP ranks it American Hello? Cuisine, where he looks oh, like, like, like this. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, and uh, let's see the tier list. So in S is burger, hot dogs, ribs mac and cheese and uh chocolate chip cookie and then we have some other stuff which i i don't care about listening to this i would only watch this live and if i was restreaming it because then i wouldn't really have a choice so i'm not watching it now uh let's go back to the old one so the the point i was trying to make is that his views are terrible after the the hype of the dsp versus the internet wear off nobody really cares about it Hey, big ups, uh, Francisco for eight months, dude. And he says, DSP versus the weekly cost of living on DoorDash. Oh! 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 The <laughs> big ups. Um, so, he did a DSP Reacts review of the Super Mario Brothers movie, which I watched. 
and somebody bought him the movie. Somebody bought him a movie. Like the previous one. Was it The Whale? Somebody actually bought him a movie. This is how much of an actual charity case he is. He can't even watch a movie. He can't even pay for a movie or like illegally download it like I do. If you don't want to pay for it. But I'm not going to ask somebody else to buy me a fucking movie. What the fuck? Uh, and they didn't even buy him movie tickets. They just like bought him like the, I don't know, the Google Play version of the movie or whatever. Wherever people buy movies from. Uh, let's go back to the reacting. This part, I'm going to take a little bit of time away from watching videos to answer questions. Oh, yeah, he's going to do a Q&A. Channel, people who are a higher level supporter. Oh, yeah, it's probably a, an Amazon like code. Answered That's in a right. Lightning round style here on the show today. Let's do that. A lightning we'll round style. More videos from members who support. That's what I'm talking video. about. Okay. That's what I'm talking right. about. First of all, do you remember the Everest College commercial guy? No, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, there we go. To see commercials of all sorts of television. <laughs> Dude, this is the DSP formula for answering a question, right? Because he's so stupid and he has so little life experience that he doesn't know 99% of stuff. And he can't just say, no, I don't know this and move on. He needs to give you any kind of experience he's ever had with anything remotely close to what he was asked about. So now he's going to start talking about something that is barely even related to what he got asked and now he's just gonna start talking about some random ads for like five minutes some of which were like long infomercials some of which were just kind of more low budget commercials for colleges and things like that uh, i remember itt technical institute on tv all the time constantly but outside of that no i don't really remember anything specific i've never heard of everest college so sadly i can't really answer this question effectively um which uncharted game do you think is the yeah, best there we go line? this wasn't that long I would have to go back and replay them all to remember. Of I distinctly course. remember liking two more than one. But hey, I what's up, Rook? Here we go. How's it going, man? Well. I remember three is the one where it's Good the morning. story with Drake, Drake or Nathan Drake as Duh. a kid. But I don't remember it that well. Uh, four, I thought, had a good story. But I would really have to go back. It's been a while. I'd have to go back and replay. Off the top of my head, I'll say two. But I'll say I'd have to go back and replay them to accurately answer the question. If someone wanted to catch up on all your gaming content, how long do you think it would take? I've been putting out daily gameplay videos. 15 Starting years off originally it was maybe two to three hours a day and then increased you know when i was doing youtube full-time but no streaming sometimes it was upwards of 10 hours a day today i now upload a hour and a half long podcast three hours of gameplay on my first stream and two hours of gameplay on my late stream okay so can, can you answer the question six to seven hours of content a day today and it's six days a week so i mean you can do the math but 15 years times that. Imagine doing this for so long and still being garbage. At, at some point, it stops being impressive and it starts being depressive. Formula, right? Now, there have been times when I took time away, but back in the day, usually it was if I was traveling to go to a, a convention or a tournament. And by the way, I would record when I was there. So there was more footage. So, okay, but in, instead, you should have actually networked and met some people and got some friends so you could go higher in your industry it's really hard to put your finger on it but no level one is much better you guys come on but i would say let's say we were going by today's standard it's much more let's comfortable argue five hours of gameplay a day all right let's say i take one day off a week it's 52 days off in a year right so let's just even guesstimate even further let's say 300 days a year five hours a day 1500 hours of gameplay in a year now i don't think dsp is gonna talk about jade's uh jade's mom on the podcast i don't think he's gonna do it unless he gets to get some kind of benefit from it or look like a victim so if jade leaves he's gonna wait for the proper time where it's a good time to mention what happened to jade that you would have to watch to catch up how many days is that let's find out are you serious? Oh my god. 1500 divided by 24. You would have to spend over two months of non-stop watching my content to watch a year's worth now. Two months of not stopping to watch my Bro, content. Bro, that's just the... Uh, that's amateur hours for detractors, dude. Come on. I'm pretty sure watching someone for two months non-stop, you get bored. So no. the thing that I've always said with the amount of content that I put out. If it's meaningful, you don't get bored. Out. You find meaning in it and you keep going. 
not everyone's going to watch every piece of content. It's okay if you skip or miss content. And don't watch my content as if it's an ongoing television show. It's not. You can miss a playthrough. You can miss a podcast. You can but but don't miss any drama sagas. Can miss you can miss whole ass playthroughs. Just don't miss any drama. Because then you're going to be confused. You're going to be some videos talking about, oh yeah, well, what is this about like a garbage disposal? What? Activate. Why are there like 50 videos about a garbage disposal? And then jump in at any point. That's the beauty of YouTube being on demand. Back in the day, I used to get constant complaints. You're putting out too much content. And I was yeah, that's true. You still do that. Like, then don't watch it all. Just watch what you want. As long as there's enough people watching at once, it doesn't matter who watches what. You don't have to watch everything. But that's the thing. You put out so much shit that it's hard to watch and it's obnoxious for people who don't really care all that much. Yeah, the, the hardcore fans, people that are going to watch everything you put out, they're going to watch it. But you want to appeal to the normies as well. So you want to make it easier for them to watch it. That's just common sense. It's not like because you skipped this week's react show that if you watch next week, you won't make sense of it. This is not an ongoing narrative. Same thing with a game. Just because you missed me playing Diablo 4 doesn't mean that if you watch me playing uh, Starfield coming up in, in September, oh, I don't get it because I didn't see his Diablo 4 playthrough. What? They're not related. You see? That's the cool thing about the content I put out and being a variety creator. So enjoy at your own pace. You're talking two months a year to catch up on my whole year's content. I mean, that's pretty insane when you think about it. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, dude. Uh, are you did done? I have a favorite cafeteria food in high school. I did not eat cafeteria food in high school. My uh, mom thoughts on the boogie situation? Like him getting like a 20 year old girlfriend that looks strange? I don't know. She, like, that's the thing. She's like 50 50. Like 50%, she looks pretty attractive in, you know, attractive. And 50%, there's some red flag that I can't quite pinpoint. I'm not exactly sure. And also, she's DS, uh, she's Boogie's girlfriend. So that's also a red flag and very suspicious. So I, I don't really know. That's all I know. And they uploaded one picture where she kind of looks like she got taxidermied. She looks completely stiff and motionless. And I don't know why you would want to upload that as your first picture with your brand new girlfriend. That's kind of strange to me. But I don't really know would make me a bag lunch. Or, when I was older, I would make my own bag lunch. I never ate cafeteria food. Seriously. Not okay. once. Okay. Well, would you rather know how you got or when you... Uh, big ups Chris Domingo for the membership, dude. And big ups Bill Brasky for six months. No. You die. When you die. Knowing how you die is kind of worthless. Unless it's something ridiculous. Like, let's say, for example... Both of them are, both of them suck. Because knowing how you die, you're going to end up avoiding it and you're going to get super paranoid for the rest of your life until it eventually happens in a super random way that you couldn't have expected. And knowing when you die, it's even more paranoia inducing because then you're going to be living every day knowing when you're going to die. And it's pretty, pretty scary. How so n neither... How you die is you fell off the top of Mount Everest. Well, that's... okay. Okay? Well, if I know that, then I know when I'm ready to die, I'll go to Mount Everest. No, that's not how it works, though. But outside of that... When that's literally not how it works. Would I ever find myself at Mount Everest? Right? Oh, Never. But that's a that's an extreme and unreasonable uh, assumption. Uh, uh, it's unreasonable for this specific hypothetical case. Unless I actively chose to go... So let's say I, I think it's more... Uh, it's more realistic to say you die by getting hit by a car. So you're going to avoid the literally all cars for the rest of your life. And in the end, you're accidentally going to happen to get hit by a car somehow. When, I don't know, you fall and you break your leg and you get transported to the hospital and then you get in a car accident. There you go. You get hit by a car and you died. Go there. So therefore, but the Everest thing, it makes no sense and is, is just a stupid example. Or I can avoid my death if I don't go to Mount Everest, correct? No. But if your way that you're going to die is more mundane, which is way more common, right? You died of cancer. You died of a heart attack. You died, you died, of, died of gout. A mundane car accident that just happened one day out of nowhere. If you know, how would that help me? If so, you died in a car accident. Shit. So now the only way to avoid death is to never be in a car for the rest of my life. That's going to severely limit my life. Yeah. So obviously that's worthless to me, right? But if you say, when you die, if you know you're going to die on October 7th, 2057, 
now you know the time frame you have to do everything you want to do with your life until that time. You know exactly the limitations you have. You can see it. You, Jay, I have these goals I can set now for my life that I want to do between now and the day I die. And I can even judge, you know, if I'm hitting those goals in a, in a good amount of time or whatever it may be, right? And it, how amazing would it be if you know that's the day you die? You can even plan your own end of your life. You can have a party around it. Yeah, what if it's next week, though? Because for some people, it's going to be tomorrow. And for some people, it's going to be next week. Have your That's, loved uh, ones and family members that show up. This is it, mm. guys. I'm saying goodbye. It's the big shove off. And you could have, that would be way more interesting and better than just knowing the method that you die. The Knowing the date, when, is way more important, I would say. Yeah, he, he wants to schedule his own death. So, <laughs> but that knowing when you die is going to make you super paranoid, when? man. In both cases. Yeah, So, but I guess knowing when you die is, is kind of better. Not how. But it's all like weird hypotheticals that are never going to happen. So there you go. What a great um, question. How do you think... What do you think of the six-man <laughs> Money story, in the Bank Mark. ladder match featuring Nothing. all of the Battle Royal Sim winners to determine the 2022 oh my God. 2023 undisputed fantasy, fantasy Sim champion of DSP's world? Oh, my God. That's a mouthful. Oh. Death by infected cat scratch. <laughs> yeah, dude, Jasper is going to kill him unwillingly. Oh, I man. think what they're saying is if you guys aren't aware, over the course of the last year... Oh, but, uh, it, bro, we are aware. So, yeah, he's making a... Uh, I don't know if he's making it, but I'm going to skip through the, the stupid explanation. Quite some time. Maybe we should do one for my anniversary event coming up. As you know, we have an anniversary event coming up where I'm going to be celebrating my 15-year anniversary as a content creator. Maybe that's something special we can do for one of those days is we have that as like a, we take a look at the all anniversary thing is so weird. I don't know. Uh, and the thing is, I'm pretty sure other content creators have done this. Like, uh, let's say you got 10 years of the nostalgia critic or some shit. I don't know. But with him, the way he he hypes it up for like, like half a year before that is so bizarre. It's such weird shit all those man winners from the last year and pit them against each other in a match to see who wins okay the thing is with a ladder match it could last five seconds i'm serious like a ladder yeah. match is so random in the wwe games that there's no guaranteed time the ai is terrible in the wwe games it's legitimately legitimately awful and it ruins modes like royal rumble and ladder matches when somebody goes on the ladder when you're on the floor and the rest of the npcs they just sit there and they look at them it'll last it may be like a five minute match where they beat each other up, someone climbs right up and wins. So it could be very underwhelming. At the flip side of that, it could take a long time. The Battle Royales that I do are guaranteed to take a long time because they have so many entrants and everything. So that's why those are usually better for streaming purposes, you see? But uh, I don't know. I'll think about it. It's an interesting idea. Hey, and, what's up, uh, Ice? How's it going, man? Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's fucking hot as fuck, man. Let's continue now with our videos from standard members. Let's see what's next. Here we go. Let's see what's next. What do we got? What's up, guys? Hope you're doing well. So this week, I decided to make top 100 things not to say to a cop. And for those of you who always oh ask my where God. Paintings from, the cops in this video are actually the ones who make these paintings. They're called the Homeless Heroes. One's an artist, one's a rapper. And they have some really great, clean videos on their channel. So definitely subscribe to them and me if you want to get notified. They have really great, clean videos on their channel. Every time I make a new video. Also, make sure you're <laughs> about which number you think is the worst. I mean, thing. this is obviously like child-friendly videos, so I get it. And don't forget, press the like button. New videos every Sunday. Ugamo Swag. I like jump cuts in videos, but I definitely feel like there's too many jump cuts. Yeah, in this videos. is They're for kids, Dave. Fast. This is actually for kids. The dude just literally gave a shout out to people that make clean videos. It's even it's hard to even digest what he's saying because he's going right from one sentence into the next with no delay. There should be he did it too quickly. This is an over 10 year old video. Maybe he got better. Bro, what, when was the last time DSP did jump cuts or any type of cuts whatsoever? For time at this but i do feel like uh, yeah this probably was not the, the best cutting system okay uh let's see top 100 and it's only a five minute video the whole video is gonna be blah 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 let's just give it a shot let's see what it is here we go how many is he gonna get through less than 10 i say go throw me the alley top 100 things not to say to okay me. let's go I can't hear you. What the heck do you want? You want a beer? I got a couple in the back. I drank some. You're not gonna find anything. I already hid the body. These are not the droids you were looking for. I mean, you're black. Come on, man. Come me some slack. You're with them now? You do not want to give me a ticket. I am not here. Uh, I had some complaints about the noise. I have some complaints about your bread. My gosh. I was not. Oh, I lost. 
He made it to 89. Did you brush your teeth? You need to start flossing. Well, hold on, look, man. I didn't know I was speeding. My eyes were shut. I thought I smelled donuts. I just want to say shout out to ZX0, who just that's dropped it. a member bomb on the channel. First time. That's it. Yeah, we're not. We've had a member bomb yeah. on DSP. Once he got a reason to pause, you know, we're not getting back to this video. But maybe we are. I don't know. In a very long time, that is very much appreciated because it supports my React content in a big way. Thank you so much for that. I will shout those out later. Why, um, though? But, uh, we're going to continue on with the video now. Okay. Do you take bribes? Cállate la boca! You're not gonna check the truck. Yeah, what he's back doing? to it. I'm wrong. Having a sale right now. I'm Why taking so many L's today. On my way to your sister's house. Boom, that's all you got? Yeah, I, th I thought about becoming a cop. Then I graduated from high school. Uh, just come back in like 15 minutes. I'm on the phone. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm actually impressed the dude came up with a hundred things like that. What, um, what seems to be the officer problem? <laughs> Okay, that that was the last one. I'm I'm hitting the skip now, and Dave made it to what sixty. <laughs> What's funny is probably quite a lot of people have said these things, right? I would almost guarantee you that quite a really? lot of people have said these things over the years to a cop. In fact, if you just watch some of those videos, right? The the the, the uh, what you call it? The videos, uh, the the cop shows. You'll probably see people saying dumb shit like this constantly today. Oh, this is ten years old. Yeah, By the way, it's not that bad, and it's also for kids. And I would rather kids watch this guy than Jake Paul or Rice Gum or Aiden Ross. So yeah, this this dude not that bad. Way, uh, X Z X O or C X zero just gifted another ten minutes. Ah, uh, bro, get the fuck out of here and food. What is this? Is this that guy? This is the guy who we saw. Is this the guy? Before, right? It oh, is. and of course, fucking eggs and bacon. So he's gonna make breakfast. Look at this. Bacon. Go fuck off. Bacon in the oven? I want... He basically put a fat on. Oh, blue. I mean, that's good. That means he doesn't have to add spray or anything. He... That's basil. Bacon. And... What he's doing here is pretty good. And blackberries. Oh, yeah. You need some... Dude, you need starch in Breakfast. There. Damn, he got some Salvano thumbs, dude. Look at that thumb. Coffee. coffee. No, you need you need starch. You need like some toast or what? like a biscuit or an English muffin or something. Like that. <laughs> he turns it to full on Gordon Ramsay, dude. Where are you going? <laughs> I love it. How much confidence he has when it comes to food. It's incredible. For that, I've got this fresh bag from South Slope Coffee here in Asheville, North Carolina. Garbage Gamer says he covered it so the steam poaches the yolks and you get yes. easy eggs without flipping. Oh, that's interesting. So that's a cooking technique. Yeah, you didn't know. To get a runny yolk without flipping it. Yeah, you didn't know. Oh, and that's okay. Sweet. I didn't it's even know that. I didn't learn something. Something or other blended. Oh, well. It's absolutely. There you go. Even the best learn every once in a while. Wonderful. It has like this rich. He has a grinder. He actually has a grinder. Kind of coffee grinder. I don't have that. I just got to it. I don't know how to describe that. I don't need to see him grind his coffee. Like he's just okay. Crazy. Well, you don't need to see any of this. Yes, you bought. It's not like you're having any of the breakfast. Do it. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. Please tell me he put starch with it. He needs starch. Where's the starch? This oh, is not a complete yeah. breakfast. I don't always make a breakfast like this, but when I do, this is not a complete breakfast. It's oh a good my breakfast, god! It's not a complete breakfast. He needs toast, or some kind of you know, like I said, like something on the side, a little a little. Crumpy, this dude is not a real, little, bro. Little biscuit. A he little, needs a biscuit. A Give this man a biscuit. Muffin. Something. He needs a starch. Scone? How about a scone? Where is the starch? Where is the starch? <laughs> a starchless breakfast is not a delicious uh, gourmet breakfast. Fuck off, Dave. So it's a good breakfast. But I, sadly, I have to rate this only four stars out of five. You need to have starch in your breakfast for it to be good. I'm sorry about that. Let's continue. And we're getting stuff now, that's wait, gonna wait. get him taken down. This is straight from Crunchyroll. I can't watch this. Ah, uh, we can't this watch this. I told you, this is gonna get him gonna terminated. Get I can't watch it. And it's also a naked guy. He's gonna get aroused. I mean, that's a 100% clip that's gonna be have problems, okay? He even said Crunchyroll on it, for God's sakes. Okay. Um, How much time do we have? Okay, we have about time for one more. Well, I don't know what clip this is. Let's see this. Can what? You a hitchhiker on a test drive? Team Tahoe. What? And uh, do you, if, you uh, buy this? I'm, you know, really considering it. Just gotta take it on a little drive. Alright. It's an 18, you know. Yeah. Well, it's comfortable. The best breakfast is biscuits and gravy. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it is. I've never had American type of biscuit. 
So I would I would like to have it. Because here biscuits is pretty much cookies. That's that's what it is. And I know the American biscuit is is a different style. Oh man. This poor guy. So they're pranking him. What? Yeah, friends with someone like this. They're pranking him. Anything helps. I'm sorry, I don't have any money. If you need a ride, you can hop in. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's pranking the guy. I'm gonna make sure it's... There you go. He's on a touch strike, dude. Yeah. You're just going off the road here? Yeah. Cool. Yep. That's right, man. Dang, is this thing brand new? What's that? Yeah. Can you turn the air conditioner up, sir? Thank you. Where are you headed? Um, I was wanting to go to the library. It's hot, it's hot, Dave. Working in the sun. Where are you working? Uh, it's right here on the corner. I... Okay, I thought maybe we were doing some uh, construction or something. Do you have any spare chairs, sir? The dude for real asked him where he's working, bro. Yeah, the, the homeless dude where he's working. Yeah, nothing, buddy. Also, credit cards. Credit card? If I had something, I'd give it to you. Oh, I'll take dude. Credit card. No, take a credit card! What? I'm not gonna give you if, my credit if, card. Uh, Are you out of your mind? No, sir. Sorry. We're picking you up. We're being taken down the road. It's nice. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, I know. I'm sorry. Even a simple man can look intelligent in a room of geniuses without speaking. <laughs> you hear that? Oh, this yeah, guy's so an asshole. Been, this car is but also, they picked up a literal homeless dude to mine for a joyride. So he's taking this road every day with my car. <clears throat> you married? Do you have a cell phone I could borrow, sir? Can I use a phone? What are you calling, man? No! What? You say no! Can't. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Yep. Hey, you can just drop me off wherever. Okay, wait. Can I finish with this call? What do you want to say to her? I'll talk to her after we get out. You go to church? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, whenever they have barbecues and, and uh, stuff. Yeah, I just hop out here. Thank hey, you. buddy. Yes. It's an individual relationship with the Lord. Yes, sir. Anytime, anyplace, anywhere. Have a good day, y'all. Oh, uh, did you have any spare change? None. None? Uh... Okay. I'll text this girlfriend. Message son using a valid number. Okay, so he's fine. He's gonna try and grab my phone, dude. Was it? Yeah. Valid number. He was gonna take my phone. And he I, was. I, I, he I was. No, he was. Okay. Was, well, what is DSP's input on this? Kind of <laughs> I handled it well, though, dude. You handled it so well. Uh, Thank you. You were cross. At least he didn't freak out or do anything embarrassing. But then again, what if he did? That's kind of messed up, right? It's like they were setting him up to do something crazy. If, what, if, what if the guy did jump out of the car with his phone, right? Well, they, they set him up to see his reaction. That's what getting pranked is about. All right. Anyway, that was only two days ago. Oh, no. You know what this All is? Right. Oh, and this is DSP versus the, the Cerulean 86. And this is on the, the King of Crybabies HD channel, a very classic channel from like a million years ago. This video itself is from like eight years ago. <laughs> this is it. Quan Chi. This is... Look at my skeletons, bitch. However, however. Oh, wow, the classic look at my skeletons, bitch. I'm not watching it. You want to know why I'm not watching it? Because it's on a troll channel. Because they didn't link to my video. You link to a fucking hater video. If yeah. If you link to my video, the original video that has the content, I'll watch it. No, I'm not going to watch someone who got 220,000 views off of it. Oh, you see salt. Somebody got 200k views eight years ago. On a video eight years ago, and he's fucking butthurt. Link to my content. This is not even a secret limited video from this year that got like half a million views. This is from eight years ago he's fucking crying about. I have this video live on my channel uh, right now. But it's fucking hard to find, and this is out there. You can find this easier. Big up Saviga for one month, dude. Hashtag justice for Jade. Hashtag it time sad. Hashtag DSP's a bitch. That's right. So if you want to watch, have me watch my content, have me watch my fucking content. Okay. Not give attention to a troll. So uh, fuck off. It's not like you're giving him a shout out. Oh, dude, we're watching Ray William Johnson. That's going to be a blast from the past. It's equals three. Remember that? Doing your mom. Doing, doing oh your mom. This guy is doing your mom. Ray William Johnson. Before he retired, huh? Before he retired. All right, we'll watch. He's not retired now. Uh, isn't he doing TikToks now? This, and this will be where we end this video. And we have one more part coming. All right. Hey guys, this video is going to make you a little sick to your stomach. 
but stick with me here. So there's a new reality TV series on the Oxygen Channel. But, like, thinking about this, back in 2012, whatever, there are very few people who could pull off the production value that this dude was doing. Even though all he did was put in other people's videos in his video and just, like, say, wow, that's fucking pretty crazy, isn't it? But the editing was good, and it was interesting, and it was catchy. And he knew how to brand himself, so that's why he was so popular. And they just released a trailer for it. It's called Preachers of L.A. Wow. If I'm correct, this Baller show alert. is just React Baller content, alert. right? It's what it is. Like, he's yes. reacting to content. So this is React before things were called React. It was his version of reacting. Uh, it, it, I, I don't know if it classifies as reacting. It's more like, check out this video, bro. And then after the video, he just tells you, wow, this was crazy, wasn't it? Now check this video out, bro. So in a way, Ray William Johnson... Because it's not him really telling you what he thinks about it. Most of the time, as, as far as I can remember. was kind of one of the innovators of doing this kind of content on YouTube ages ago. The Bible says that I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I believe that. P. Diddy, Jay Z, they're not the only ones who should be driving Ferraris. And wow, baller cars. alert, dude. Baller alert. <laughs> those who sow among us should reap from us. That's. <laughs> I fucking love them. I love these preachers trying to justify driving in fucking Lambos. Implying that the preachers so should be taken care of. Wow. Jesus called. He wants his religion back. These guys are preachers? So these guys are preachers living lavish, insane. Yeah rich lives based off of you know their following their religious yes. followers that's like the detractors that's that's how i live i open the gate and i drive my lambo through the gate and then i park it and then i sit inside with like a interview crew from like i don't know vice and they ask me like how did you amass all this massive wealth and i'm like well sometimes mm, you you do something on the internet and they're living in and I, then i don't tell them the secret Houses obviously like that and driving around in ferraris and bentleys man i'm in the wrong business i need to start a religion i'll start a religion it's called the church of retardation and you'll all be the retards look i've said this many times the retards that's fucking badass i'm not a religious guy at all although i'm not anti-religion i think religion makes a lot of people very happy and that fact in turn makes me happy. That being said, it's hard not to take issue with a preacher driving around in a Ferrari. Probably because he works in a donation-based industry, so it appears that the money people are donating to the church is going to pay for his nice new car. Well, what? Uh, out of all the Ray William Johnson video, why this one? Why would somebody send him this? That's not the truth. It looks that way. Nah, you see, it, here's why this is very tricky. All right. Why? The oh, this guy also has a Ferrari chain. Why? <laughs> that's that's a nice chain, but why? People who are I guess why not? Giving to this church. All right. In their minds, they feel like they're getting their money's worth. Like they feel like they're getting something out of it. If they truly believe in this religion that they're following, they're getting a sense of self-worth. They're getting a sense of belonging. In a lot of the cases, they feel like they're getting spiritual guidance in their lives. So it's so it's meaningful in a way, right? And you might go to you might watch one of these preachers. The and oh my god, mm. healing and shit. And the people actually sometimes believe they're being healed. Now they're not. Wow, that is lying. That's charlatanism. But at the same time, some of these people have come out and said things like, "If I didn't have this in my life, dude, he's just talking about himself at this point." I wouldn't feel as good as I do. Yeah, literally. He's talking about how people send him emails talking about, man, like, I I was really depressed, and then I watched your Heavy Rain playthrough, and then I got reminded that there's people that are worse off than me, and then my day became better. So in a way, it's kind of like they're paying to support what they're getting something out of. Even if- So meaningful content. He connects with this. I love it. Yeah, that's that's so good. And I'm thinking like, is it just me trying to connect it and I'm I'm reaching? But it really doesn't take too much effort to connect the two. Phil has a religious following too. It's called Pignosis. Pignos. Now give me tips. Money bag. Money KO Nieces. Money KO Nieces. 
Oh, money kinesis. Yes, what yes. Even the pig gnosis. I do with my hands like this, and people send me their money. I'm an X man. Yes, that's exactly what we mean. You are supernatural. The religion is complete bullshit, and it's nonsense. And the person running it doesn't even believe it. If someone says to them, "Well, I'm getting something out of what you're doing. It's positive influence in my life," right? Is that wrong? Big ups, uh, uh, Logan K and Kyle Denson and for the to contributions to the religion. I hope you got your meaningful content out of this. Thought on it. And if you didn't, you can have a sound bite. Here is one for Logan. Um, Let me tell you something, brother. When I hold a man's penis, I tell you what I do. I hold on to it tight, brother. And here's one for Kyle. Um, oh, we got another one. There you go. All right. Now, you can't tell me this wasn't meaningful. A lot of people say that absolutely anyone who accepts donations of any type whatsoever is, is, is wrong. Like, people criticize me and other people who accept donations for our content, right? So here's the- But it's not accepting the donations. It's, it's literally just asking people for them. That is the problem. And the way you ask people for them, that is the problem. Which, he still- I don't know if he's refusing to acknowledge this, or he just- doesn't believe in that the thing if and it's easier to just generalize and say that everyone who is accepting donations you come to my channel every day and you watch my streams and you watch my videos and you enjoy the content okay you say, i would like this content to continue. and it's literally like i i, I wasn't reaching so because this whole time he was just talking about himself you i'm going to support you with a donation today i'm going to send you a tip i'm going to drop a member bomb on your channel or whatever that may be correct well, other people may not like the content that I put out and say, well, why would that person do it? Well, it's not your right to really criticize that because if that person likes the content, they have a right to support it, right? It's up to them to judge whether or not that's meaningful content to them. Meaningful? Right? I would say <clears throat> where things go wrong. This video is a hidden gem, though, because I was wondering why somebody sent, sent him the video. Now I understand a thousand percent. Wrong is when someone is outright lying about the service they are providing okay so for example if this guy right here who I well they're they're actually being more honest than phil if you think about it because you know when you give them money they don't send it to jesus they're gonna buy something cool with it and that's why this dude has a chain with a ferrari logo on it that is probably iced out and has like 25 karat gold on it and when you tip dsp he tells you that that money is going to go to pay his big bills this week. And then you see he got like five new champions and WWE champions. So those dudes are actually more honest and transparent than he is. I don't know who the hell this guy is. If he says hmm. to his following, listen, if you come to church and you pray with me and you support this church with donations, you're going to heaven. If he Well, yeah, the, they, they do take it from... Um... Uh, from donations to the church, but they are the church. He said that. That's one million percent wrong. He is lying to his audience to elicit a response of support. Okay, but if someone is go just saying, oh, "Listen, I like going to church with this guy," his what he says to me, he, he says inspirational things that make me feel better in my life. Right. Okay, so meaningful content. And that's what people are getting out of it, and they choose to willingly support it. That's. I, I feel like there's. That's not necessarily something to be hated on i mean yes again if this guy literally doesn't believe the religion he's preaching he made it up just to make money then yeah he made it up there. but but aren't they all christian preachers if this is something I, like this, i think i have a i have a uh how can i say i have a mantra that i follow in life a motor maybe not necessarily religion but you know how these motivational speakers go around bro we're completely fucking lost in the sauce at this point He's just, he just wants to make it about himself and how you have no right to shit on anybody who's donating to them because it's meaningful if they think it's meaningful. And that's why he loves the word meaningful so much because anything can be meaningful if you decide it is. And they give motivation with the things that they're saying and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And people are like, well, I want to support their cause. I'm going to go to their shows. I'm going to pay to see them. I'm going to buy their merch. I'm going to buy their books. I'm going to buy their motivational videos. And I want to, you know, that... Is there anything wrong with that? You might very well believe that the motivational speaker is full of shit and nothing they say has any validity, but if someone else got something out of it and they want to support that person, that's their right to make that judgment, you know? These people <laughs> should be mature enough adults to judge for themselves. Yeah. Not? 
Um. Okay. But yeah, when you get to the when I guess really where the slippery slope happens, right? When it comes to people who willingly know that they are misleading people or they are actually making statements that are false to get ahead in life and, and abuse people who are maybe impressionable people, correct? Like, okay, correct. you want to make a, an association here? Let's do it. Let's do it. If you're someone who's a content creator who puts out gameplay videos, podcasts. Oh, now we're going to shit on somebody. I love this. Yeah, let's let's see this one. Content, people like what do they do? They, they're they shilling a video game that it sucks. And they say, I want to crowdfund you. I'll, I'll send you a super chat today. I'll become a, a sub subscriber to your okay. channel. Okay. I'll, I'll do a, a tip. All right. I don't think anyone's going to say there's anything wrong with that. Right. But now what about the people who do sexualized content? This is so Freudian on Phil's part. It hurts. Phil is literally this preacher. Bro. I'm like... Pig Roach justifying the pig cult scam through a comparison to this video. Yeah, it's like... It, he fucking got me, man. He rambled for so long that I can't make heads or tails of it. I'm so fucking confused right now. And now we're talking about sexualized videos. What the fuck? Content. Thank you, Nate, and uh, Free99 for the catch abuse oh. to the, the cult of meaningful content. A girl who jumps in a hot tub in a skimpy bikini, okay. and people throw her money. Okay, why is that not meaningful? If I get a boner from it, is that not meaningful? Don't I decide what is meaningful? So by DSP's very logic from two minutes ago, it's perfectly okay if I send her all my money because I think it's meaningful and I get something out of it, such as busting a nut, for example. Not that I am, but Derek, for example. Why are they throwing her the money? Because right? she is attractive and she gives them a boner, I guess. Is it because they like the content they're watching? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I guess. But is it because yes? they believe that and somehow in the back of their minds, they have this demented feeling? What? Because they're supporting this, this chick who is probably abusing their belief system that they think what oh, if i throw some money they'll notice me, they'll actually give me a <laughs> bro people do that to you fucking dudes write whole guides to you you have grown men simping for you are you for real only ice coffee had a seek not secret a separate bank account not a bank account but a savings account made for buying dsp a fucking laptop for real they do that to you Love and attention. Maybe I could be in a relationship with a person. Uh, can I be like... Where... Phil. 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 Where did all your girlfriends come from? Where did you meet them? Where did you meet Panda Lee? Where did you meet Kat? Where's your wife from? Where did you meet her? Where? Honest with you guys, alright? Be honest, I'll Phil. I'm to tell you. A quick story. And a quick story. Oh, we're gonna talk about Gamer Nicole. When I first started as a content creator on the internet... All right. I had a few people who actually were like that with me. They were kind of obsessed. And at first it's a little, it's a little interesting to see, wow, these people really are like, they like me that much. Right. But then it gets to the point where these people kind of go extreme. And there was one particular person who. What is extreme? They send you nudes? Had this crazy belief that I was going to romantically be involved with them. All right. Okay. Now, did I string this person along? I feel like I'm in an alternate dimension now. <laughs> this is such a fucking strange segment, dude. I'm 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 wondering why not many people are talking about this. This is such a fantastic DSP segment. It's actually fantastic. This whole like I don't know, probably like ten minutes. The last seven, eight minutes. God damn. And this is from July 9th. Years ago I worked at a helicopter company. Hey, big up synonymous. Yeah, we, we should have had this one, so we know the full context, because now it's just out of context. So, okay, she, he had a, a girl that liked him. She was called Gamer Nicole. And when Panda Lee showed up, she vanished and she quit. Long? Did I tell them? Oh, yeah. You know, no. Once I found that out, I had a real conversation with this fan. And I said, that will never happen. I love the fact that you we watch my videos, that you might go to like a convention or whatever, or whatever it may be. But understand something. That is a fantasy in your head that is never going to happen. And if it means that that crushes your belief system in me, that you don't want to be involved with me ever again, right? Then so be it. That's okay. I would rather tell you the truth to your face than have someone 
lead you on forever and now you're supporting me you're sending me donations you're doing all this stuff with an expectation that will never happen you understand so when i know that's just happening why is he banging on his fucking desk and i've been thinking the whole time because i'm i'm hearing it like someone is is walking on the room above me and there's no room above me and i'm like what the fuck is this sound it's him just banging on his desk like this and you you can't even hear it on my side because i actually mute the background shit i'll i'll call she liked it when i did the hella gingerly then i got fired from my job <laughs> pull it out that's uh that's the context that's the actual full context and i've said to you guys how many times over the years <laughs> dude i got laid off for no fucking reason they told me to put fucking pants on what a bunch of fucking idiots Cheers. i wasn't even hard don't expect anything more than us having the... a casual social relationship on a stream or in a video or you know what i mean that's that's where it's gonna end i have a wife i have a family that's where my that personal time is going to go all right these guys these preachers well to what extent are they telling their following well if you support me you're getting into heaven you're doing it. they're pro propagating this belief system that the more that you buy in and the more you support, you're actually gonna promise yourself eternal rewards, right? Yeah, but there's no way to actually know. That's why the religious scams are so easy because you can promise somebody literally everything after they die. And it, you never know, man, it might be true. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> they, can't, they can't disprove it. So if any of these guys are doing that, that I feel is wrong. But if people just see them as like an emotional leader, if people see them as an inspiration, someone who's like a movement of, um, uh, like, like I said, like a motivational speaker, that's a little different, I feel. You can get something out of someone being motivational, right? What? But okay. that's okay. Sure. As long as you don't take it to the next level. If these guys are presenting themselves in a way where, listen, I'm something to you. I'm a father to you. I'm a an idol to you. I'm a god to you. Uh, you know what I mean? Someone, I, I'm a god to, to you. <laughs> has this little self-awareness. If this isn't oh, a character dude. he's playing, this is the sadist man-child in human history. No, no, there's no character, man. We're way past that, Free 99 we're, we're way past that, dude. This is real and raw. This is the raw Philip. That's wrong. <laughs> I am a god to you. I am a father to you. And that should absolutely... I would like him to have a monologue like this. Everyone... I have your fucking father, uh, and if you don't fucking like it, get the fuck out of my household. Get the fuck out of my family, you fucking idiots. So what if I don't have real children that are in person? I have internet children, you fucking morons. Be criticized, and in my opinion, shut get down. the that fuck out of my out. house. There's too many impressionable people out there. Okay. How many people watch these female streamers take their clothes off on a stream and throw the money with this insane belief system that because I'm giving them a tip on a stream or I unloaded my bank account, you know, now I'm gonna have a relationship with this person in the future. Yeah, how many people uh, tip Phil with the ex expectation that they're going to be mods in his chat or they're going to be his friends? As, as we learned from the Snorlax King, who is a guy who openly admitted that he was sending DSP a lot of money just so he can buy his way into being a mod and into being some kind of a friend to Phil. That's what he admitted he spent so much money on and that's why he later got his, uh, his refund. That's, it's wild, right? That's just crazy and there's a whole industry based on that. There's whole wrong, industry. In my so it's funny because people will criticize someone like me and say, well, you accept donations like this guy. Yeah, but am I promising you guys insanely unrealistic things in response to your contributions? No, you know what it does. When you contribute to my content, you're going to get content every day. You know what kind of content. I listen to feedback for improving my content. Hell, this whole React channel I'm doing right now is based on your feedback. That's why I do it, right? But oh, that's so good, you man. I love this segment. He's both selling himself to you and justifying why everybody else sucks. Which is, is the best DSP. I'm not over-promising and under-delivering. I temper expectations. So that way you guys know what you're getting into. And if you contribute, hopefully you're not disappointed because you contributed didn't get what you wanted out of it, right? These guys, I don't... Especially with this hat. This is one of those hats where he sees them on, he puts them on, and I look at him. And I cannot, for the life of me, take anything he says seriously. No. I think these guys, let's go to the absolute extreme. Let's live it on the high end of life, right? I want him to do like a, a review of a really dark movie with like a, with this hat on 
So on the DSP Reacts channel, he just shows up one day and his guys, hello everyone. So welcome to DSP Reacts and today I'm going to review Schindler's List. So now this is a movie about the atrocities that happened during World War II. And so on and so on. I would love to see that with that hat on. Telling people whatever they want to hear so that we can get ahead in line. And then, by the way, if you have a problem with that later, oh well, we're rich, we're protected. We're in a fucking Fort Knox with private security. You know, I live up in the fucking Hampton Hills and you can't get to me anyway. You live in a gated community, DSP. What? I'll drive away in my Bentley. <laughs> okay, you're gonna drive away in your Corolla. Right? Anyway. All right, well guys, we got one part left. I hope that you will join me for the final part of DSP versus the internet. Thank you for watching. So wow, what a what a closer. What a closer. And the, the Mario movie, I'm not going to watch it now, even though I saw the movie the other day, but we have something special prepared for that. My own GTA fail montage in Japan's noisiest woman. I'm definitely not watching that, but I want to see the TikTok segment because he got a run in with TikTok recently, and I want to see what the how he's going to react to that. Hello everyone, Phil here, and welcome back to DSP vs. the Internet, episode 21 for July 9th, 2023. I hope that all of you are enjoying the show so far today. Thanks to those live and, and supporting it, and also those who are watching on demand. Remember, becoming... Yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. ...like show that we do every single week. Without further ado, let's continue on with the ultra member submissions for the week. Let's see what's next. Why is everybody sending in videos from like 6 to 10 years ago? Aren't there any recent videos that are interesting? <clears throat> and of course they're like aged and the comedy that used to be popular back then is not popular anymore and then you get this face look at the fucking face he gives you this is the bored dsp face this is when you disappointed him and but he can't outright tell you he's disappointed he needs to very strongly hint that he's disappointed but you can tell he's disappointed because he's giving you this face he is serving disappointment on the runway look at this disappointment with with the toilet seat <laughs> um All right, very inspiring of gout and his goutiness yes we need to make um like a church not a church a, a gospel song about dsp i think that's one of the few ones that we haven't made it's like heavy metal and gospel damn i i wish somebody would make a gospel dsp song you can make a horror movie about this the guy invites a fan to 1v1 to recreate Evo and kills them and puts them in the closet. He forgets about it five minutes later and acts like it never happened. <laughs> what? He invites a fan one-on-one -on -one to recreate Evo and kills them. <laughs> then he he should uh, he should invite uh, dudes from Japan, some like foreign workers, some expats from Japan, because you know it's probably easier to make them disappear because they're gonna be like tourists or something and he's gonna pretend like they're the the guys that beat him at evo and when they beat him he's gonna kill him and then he's gonna have like a redemption moment or, or something and then he's gonna throw him out okay yeah this is getting skipped and viral tiktoks when 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 were they viral though Yikes, that's obnoxious. <laughs> Holy shit. I heard this all the time back in the day. Big ups, uh, Haunting Goo and Rodrigo what? for their contributions. Oh, that, that was it. So, oh yeah, it's, this is six days ago and it has 14 views. So this is most probably the guy who sent him the video made the video. So, viral TikToks. Two minutes, 30 seconds. Here we go. Viral TikToks, ready? Okay, let's, let's check him out. Without... And they're all screen recorded instead of downloaded which is interesting me or one year without video and the guy doesn't have battery the you're not gonna get this for a whole year i'm like bitch i beat my meat every single day now hold up bro i gotta get this <laughs> i'm passing the phone to someone who plays the whole football team i'm passing the phone to whoa <laughs> she ate the the girl that fucked the whole football team the, the homeless situation in california is freaking off. ridiculous right what? I think right now in the U.S. there are about 600,000 homeless people in the U.S. What? Well, no, there's more than 600,000 homeless people in America. Oh, it's more than that. It's in the millions, guy. 
Uh, that's not what's what his voice? Meta-analysis says better. Meta-analysis, meta okay, so what's your source that you say that there's only 600,000, what source is that? Okay, what? hey Siri, what's the homeless population in the United States of America? Where's the funny? 567,750 ah! in the United ah! States. He got crushed. Oh! He got laughing, crushed. Laughing, laughing, laughing. Bro, what the fuck are these TikToks, dude? <laughs> the homeless guy screamed it. When you go to bed with that person, you're not just going to bed with that. Person. Oh yeah, this is fucking awesome. This the 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 old sex education videos are fucking classic, person, dude. You're going to bed with every other person that yeah, look person at this. has ever gone to bed with before in their life. I'm not even kidding you. I think I saw this video. I swear to God, I think I saw this video in school. I remember that quote. I absolutely word for word remember hearing that quote. I went to Catholic school, so I don't know where oh, the video was from. Did. But that absolutely rings true, like for something that I was told when I was a kid. <laughs> I swear to God. What if I want to have sex before I get married? Well, I guess you just have to be prepared. To <laughs> <laughs> well, prepare to die, boys. You're going to hell and your dick's Get on the slave trade. <laughs> That's the same voice he did. <laughs> it's the same voice as the slave trade. Ah, I should make an edit. Hold on, hold on. Uh, DSP slave trade. Which is a thing that uh, I never thought I would have to make. Uh, okay, let's see this one. Best if we make this quick. <laughs> hold on, Yo, I need to great. find the, the good moment. That's really good. I like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well. <clears throat> All right, boys, prepare the slave trade. For... Well, prepare to die, boys. You're going <laughs> to hell. Your dick's falling off, and you're gonna die. <laughs> Yo, that's great. That's really good. I like that. It is really good. The worst performances of my career, and they never doubted it for a second. Do you want to know how I know this is false? And that anybody who ever says they experienced this is lying? This is me in 2016 and parts of 2017. I wore this damn hat every single day to class. I was taking a class called Peace and Social Justice Studies. Basically, I submitted a Fox News version of a research paper about reverse racism. Because, you know, I was part of a cult. Somehow believed that was a thing. But anyway, I submitted this paper, and he said, well, he disagrees with where's me. The, every criteria where's the funny? Of the paper, and therefore, I got full credit. So please, don't tell me you experienced this, that you somehow have to lie, because then I will call you a liar. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it, I don't but... Know what he was calling out. The guy yeah, let's move on. To be a liberal. I mean, this is a video with literally 14 views in six days. It's not very good. Classes, and he says, well, I pretended to be a Republican. Not very quality. And I passed my classes. Yeah, but if you both hit the criteria Bold. to pass the classes you would still pass <laughs> <clears throat> so neither of them proved any point they're both idiots basically but then again that's we're all TikTok, idiots so, we're yeah. watching dark side phil that's pretty watch stuff course, i guess we're all idiots okay. <clears throat> oh that's tiktok so everybody's an idiot on tiktok I'm hoping that lady does like my show. She might come over, drop me in some dough. So the Mongo man don't have to go so close. But no, sir. She just walked right past. Okay, this trash. We skip into the. Oh, no. He's watching Vouch. Uh, let's skip this. And then he is watching. But why did he stop watching it? That's what I'm curious about. I can't even make this out. I can't even make out. Like, I don't even know. And this is. Uh, dude, this is the same guy with 14 views in four days. Sending him a systemic racism debate featuring Vouch or Vosh. I don't, I don't know. I don't watch the two. I can't make out what they're. I just know he makes like Politisberg videos, and I'm not interested. It sounds like some shit that JPEG Mafia would sample. And that's because he actually did. Wow, almost 10 million views. <clears throat> okay. Oh, 
play. We need React Cam. Watch their feet. That's the key. Why do they why do they learn these songs? They have no significance. The songs are at a perfect pace. pace Tempo? A perfect, a, well, cadence, yes, but a perfect pace. So they can walk perfectly together. Yeah, because they're That's marching. Why. So even though the lyrics are kind of silly or ridiculous or, or just, you know, meant to be like musical to, to match that that pace. That's why, because look at his feet. His feet are perfectly in line with it. The te tempo. Thank you, SD Charlie. Yeah, they're marching, the DSP. The they're walk, marching. The That's it. literally watch the point. This guy's feet. Watch his feet, dude. Sergeant, right? The drill sergeant's feet. Right. It's like he, he feels like he's spitting some esoteric knowledge that nobody else is supposed to know. Left. Right. Explaining marching. Left. Right. Bruh. Left. Right, left, right. It's perfectly in tune with it. So they move at exactly the right speed. I don't know what they're saying. Oh, we, oh, we. I don't know what they're saying. I have no clue. We join the army. We join the army. This is the JPEG Mafia sample. Yeah. Yo. 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 Anyways, and there's uh, the next song also does it. Yeah. But yeah, he used to be a soldier. Like Soldier Boy. Who didn't used to be a soldier. It's very confusing. Oh yeah, can we get to the next one? Continue. Let's continue. Interesting. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What would you do if this woman was your neighbor? <laughs> Move? Or commit crimes? Invest in some earmuffs or earplugs. Yo, know, I, I thought she was getting clapped for a second there. <laughs> That's great! <laughs> That's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if your family one by one died a slow, agonizing death? Uh, I would probably be sad. Next video. Right, it's interesting, but I don't want to watch it for 11 minutes. Yeah, I'll that's interesting, dude. Let's uh, let's not watch it. Unless he gets, like, super racist. Which I wouldn't know, because I'm skipping it. That's actually not she that bad. Also scream insults at passers-by, sadly without the catchy tune. <laughs> and new windows to try and block out the sound. Okay, so she's a crazy loud woman. In so Japan, that the town updated their laws. To or did she Japanese processes at once? People want and that miss stupid. Like what is stupid? Point, hold on, hold on. We need to find her. what the stupid is. A neighbor's home. So oh. basically, it all started with a neighbor that might have actually been annoying to her. Legit, they actually started fighting in the streets. And when that neighbor moved out, the other neighbors were pissy, right? And then it, that's just stupid. Like at one point. Do you, do you just say, alright, enough is enough, this is dumb, none of us are gonna get a nice normal life here if we keep acting like children. Let's stop with the bullshit and act like adults and just ignore each other, right? <clears throat> this is a case where when you fight fire with fire, everything burns, right? Literally. Alright, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the wisdom, Dave. Let's, uh, let's do the next one. Is there even a next one? Oh yeah, this is actually, I don't know. No, he's still watching this one. Okay, now now he's watching something. Yikes. Else. Uh, Yikes. Oh, wait. I think this is it. In a mattress commercial. Okay. I think that was, I don't think this is uh from the playlist. Hold on, because I don't what? recognize this one. Doesn't Hold recognize on. it. Somebody snuck that in. The Ferris in the I didn't say to play. Yup, that was the last one. This is not it. Okay. So now guys, what we're gonna do, we're gonna shift over to the standard member videos. And I had just hit shuffle. All right. 
And we're going to see what these are. What? Oh, oh look at this. DSP this highlights. Highlight of my gameplay. Whoa. My actual gameplay. But no, this is a this is how you don't play cuz it's a mission failed highlights. So it's low lights. This is not you being good at the game. This is you being bad at the game. So it's not highlights. From over 10 years ago when I used to play you know, just games on the internet. There was no live interaction with an audience. There was no stream. There okay. was no cam. It was just raw gameplay of me playing with a camera and talking over it. And there used to actually be highlight channel. Look, this video is 159,000. Wow, years. that's crazy, used to dude. Take clips, positive clips. This is not someone doing it. This is how you. This don't is play. not a positive clip. This is literally a, this is how you don't play. You're failing in those clips. Hey, this and is that's why they got so many views because it's mission failed highlights. You failed the mission, dumbass. Is someone actually being nice and positive? You see, but this is not so, positive. Here's someone who did a positive montage. Let's let's take a look. Hey, big ups, uh, Aja man. What's up, man? Here's the music. Welcome to the React Zone. Here we go. Wow, such great fucking quality. Yeah, this is this is this is how you don't play montage. It's him getting busted by the cops. What? What? That was completely unfair. And it's just him saying that it was unfair. What's the difference between this and Evil AJ? Fucking stupid, dude. It's fucking stupid. That is so dumb. So I played the, these GTA games originally the summer of 2012. So 11 years ago is when I had my summer of GTA. And this was me playing them on PS2. But I blew them up widescreen on my, my TV, and I was recording with a camera. They had monstrous amounts of input delay. Like, doing a standard definition game on an HD TV, it was, like, really hard to play them because everything was so delayed, but I did it somehow. I mean, it wasn't pretty, but it was pretty funny to see me fail as much as I did. do all that. This sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were your fucking wanted level. That was complete bullshit. A cop drove straight into me, bring me to a dead stop. Another cop runs up from the side and gets us. That's bullshit. Okay. <laughs> oh no! This mission, I remember this mission, infamous. What? This mission is 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 actually very easy. Uh, on the definitive edition, I don't know, I don't remember how it was on the normal one, but it's it's a pretty easy mission. If you let them shoot at you, of course, it's it's not very easy. Oh, I'll stop. What? That's fucking stupid. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> that just oh, lets him die. First, if I knew that. Oh I remember. So that's, that's the mission. You have to you have to transport a bunch of crates into a truck and drive the truck away, but you don't know where the crates actually are. So you're just looking around for them, and there's two outside of the warehouse, and the bunch are inside. But you think, oh, I'll just get the ones inside. Oh no, there's two more. Well, failed the mission. You got killed. <laughs> How the fuck was I supposed to know that? There's more outside. You're about to die, and you're worried about the two fucking boxes outside. You're an asshole. What <laughs> the world work? Come on, this sucks. Hey, big ups for the sub, uh, Heather P. Shout out. Riders history. This mission is fucking stupid. There's no. How am I supposed to do? So this is this is just that this is how you don't play. I don't know why he's so glad that this exists because it says highlight in the in the title. Is, can somebody try and make a, a this is how you don't play, but just call it highlights and see what how he's going to react? I hate wouldn't get on like a new channel, some random new channel any help, bro? and do like Legend of Zelda DSP highlights. And it's just him failing at the game, but it says highlights on it. So it's, it's going to think it's good. No checkpoints every time oh. you have to drive. Hey, big ups uh, AMAG for the five gifts, dude. And uh, as I'm just switching on to the layout with... Uh, with a capture card because i wanted to try it out see if it's actually gonna work and i think it does i think it does because until now whenever i've had gameplay on my streams it's always been through remote play which does it over the network and that did a fair enough job when i was on the old internet that was kind of better but now it's been tough so i had to adapt to the landscape so i'm finally direct capturing stuff and, you know, it's pretty fucking cool, I gotta say. It's definitely worth it. Uh, so let me just resize all the stuff that I gotta resize. Oh Back to the God. mission area and stuff? It was a lot of time wasted, Why? for sure. And congrats everybody that uh, snatched the membership. 
Why me? Driving all the way across the goddamn map. Uh, what? What? What the fuck was that? Oh, this mission. No, I lit myself on fire. Oh. Yeah, okay. This this react episode is dog shit. He's literally just watching a this is how you don't play and having fun with it. But it wasn't a troll that made it, so that makes it good. Shall we listen to a review of something? What was the last thing that he reviewed? Avatar? I haven't seen that, so I can't really debunk him. Uh, and he watched Fish Tank Live this four weeks ago. Man, these the, the views are really bad on those videos. But I don't, I mean, whatever, whatever make this channel keep getting gifted memberships and tips, I guess. Uh, the DSP recap reactions 2023. Oh yeah, let's, let's talk about video gaming, right? Gaming. This is what we're here for on the DSP reacts channel, right? He's going to be talking about Xbox, Starfield, Ubisoft Forward, and Capcom showcases, which happened a month ago. So... I think it's going to be pretty interesting because I watched all of them, including the um, uh, the Starfield Direct, which I'm got to say I'm pretty impressed with, but also um, kind of skeptical because you know how Bethesda is, you know, they be they're be over promising and under delivering sometimes, especially when they say 16 times the something. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's start up with this. And I'll boot up some game to, to check out how it works. Because now my bitrate is also lower, so I want to see if it's not going to be too too blurry and uh, look like uh, dog shit. Dog. Anyways, let's see what he has to say about this. Wow, look at this. Look at this hot intro. DSP reacts. The best react. A reacts channel, not even a react channel. The best reacts channel on YouTube. And YouTube is also spelled wrong with the wrong capitalization of the letters. Fantastic. What a professional review. And also DSP reacts is, is supposed to be one word because it's one word here in the title. But uh, forget about that. We don't have to go by the rules. We make our own rules here at DSP reacts. Yeah, this is an another template, which... I mean, there's nothing wrong with templates. Not everybody has uh, Premiere Pro or After Effects. That's all right. But, you know, it's the, the small things like getting the channel name wrong and, you know, getting YouTube with a wrong capitalization. That, you know, makes it look sloppy and lazy. But I saw when people found out the latest um, installment of template video, as you can see here. Are you going to see it? I think you will. Yeah, this one. People had a, a a great bit of fun on Twitter making their own versions of it because they found the um, uh, they found the template within like ten minutes. So yeah, this this time it's different. As you can see here, DSP reacts is all caps, and here you got the DSP all caps. Then you got a capital R, and the rest is small. So uh, it's still almost correct. And then it says, the best Reacts channel on YouTube. And YouTube, again, it has the, the wrong capitalization. But who cares about that? All we care about is the meaning and the content and the fun. And the meaning. And the content. Whoa, what is going on, everyone? Whoa. What is going on? To a special video. As you know, this week was a crazy week for digital presentations for the games industry. Uh, it started with Summer Game Fest, which I've already done a full-length live react to. And oh. I actually want to watch that one first because Summer Game Fest was packed with stuff and there's a lot of stuff that I'm pretty sure he's going to hate or be indifferent about. So let's start with that one first. Uh, Summer Game Fest 2023. I'm not going to watch the whole one hour 48 minute thing when he's bored and he just tells you he hates everything. So let's uh, let's see him ramble about this shit. Hello, everyone. And yeah, why is the desktop audio so low? What? Nothing I could do. I don't know how this happened, but I fixed it. Thanks for somebody saying low volume. Phil here. Welcome to DSP Reacts. It's all fixed. Welcome to my recap and reactions of Summer Game Fest 2023. We just finished watching the one hour and 45 there you minute go. long live presentation. And uh, it was an interesting mix of stuff. We had some interesting updates and first information about games we already knew were coming out. 
There was a couple interesting announcements. Some release dates were added. Overall, I thought it was okay, but I'm not blown away by this show. There's been some other, you know, game fests and things that have been better. This one was just kind of mid for me, meaning there was a couple was of here and things that I liked, but there was nothing that actually made my draw drop or blew me away or anything like it that. It didn't make I his draw like, drop. Yeah, okay. Um, so the purpose of this video, rather than you watching my live react, which is a separate video, if you actually want to watch the raw hour 45 minutes and my true reactions as they happen, this video is going to go through the summary, all the notes I took, and basically tell you about each one what I thought. But that way you don't you get rid of the blow. It's just me talking about each point. Big ups uh, an actor portraying Charles Darwin for two months, dude. In the whole hour forty five minutes, you're welcome to watch that if you'd like. That is live on the channel right now, or should be by the time you're watching this. But uh, I like to do what I call recap reactions for those who are my longtime viewers. I didn't used to do the live react, and this is a little bit more concise and a little bit more thought put into my reactions to it. All right, so let's get started. First of all, Bloom Kid just did a super chat. He said, Miles Morales is my favorite Spider-Man after Across the Spider-Verse. I can't wait for Spider-Man 2. Yes, Spider-Man 2 was one of the games that was actually shown at Game Fest. Uh, Summer Game Fest, I should say. And uh, looks interesting. They didn't really reveal too much new. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Thank you, Bloomkit, for the super chat. Okay. They oh, and the obnoxious knee slap, man. That shit is fucking game. annoying. Like, wait a minute. The Prince of Persia remake that was supposed to come out like a year ago. No, got delayed. it's it a 2D side scroller. Prince of Persia. Twice and still trying to redo this game. No, it's a new Prince of Persia game, a 2D game called The Lost Crown. It's interesting. It's more cartoony graphics, but it has interesting gameplay elements like combat mechanics, like like fighting combos and stuff. And uh, it looked pretty interesting to me. I was like, wow, it's a 2D Prince of Persia. Like they're going back to their roots after having those games that went full 3d over a decade ago around the xbox 360 ps3 era looks like they're kind of going back to their roots with this new game especially with these the dawn of the more indie games movement and retro games movement i'm not surprised that they decided to do that but what was interesting is that there was no information about the prince of persia reboot or remake at all it was just this game and this is coming out on january 18th personally looks interesting to me i'll consider it because it, it, it looks like a, a throwback to me um mortal kombat 1 Ed Boon came out. He talked all about this game. For those who don't know, Ed Boon, one of the co-creators of Mortal Kombat, along, along with uh, John Tobias. He stuck with the franchise all these years. And he was here to talk about some of the new gameplay mechanics. First thing they showed was a trailer of the gameplay showing off the story mode. And it's interesting because in the story mode, some of the characters that we know, like Kenshi, isn't blind in the story. Okay? Pretty interesting that they've, they're basically going back Big on a lot of the to show. Oh, this is it's this 1,230 a.m. and I can't oh. sleep. Sing me a lullaby. Um, Let me see. I think I have some on the soundboard. Do I have some songs? No, I don't. Uh, best I could do is... Uh, I actually do. I have a song. This is by Jim Cornette. Black Mussolini! It's our man Phil! And he's back, and he's gonna raise some hill. Oh. There you go. If this didn't put you to sleep, then then I don't know what else. Um. But I can't sing, dude. I'm not musically gifted. So, cameos. What are they? They're essentially. Uh, but big ups, uh, Charles played? Darwin oh, portraying art, art actor, the dude. The King big of ups. Fighters franchise. So you're gonna have these characters who aren't necessarily full fledged fighters, but they're assist fighters who will come in and do a special move or tactic during combat. You could use this to extend combos, but you can also use this. One of the interesting things I saw, I think it's a combo breaker. Like someone was getting comboed, and all. All right, this, this is getting the skip. The cameo, the other person came out. This is not getting the watch. This is definitely getting the skip. Back a bit with the, which I'm totally. At. Overall, it looks good to me. It looks like. The, the engine of Mortal Kombat... And a massive T-Pose. This is a huge T-Pose. ...Fighters is going to change it up a bit and make it feel a little bit different. Next was a game called Path of Exile 2, which is Path of Exile 2. Essentially, it's Diablo, but it's like modern Diablo. I guess what the people are saying is Path of Exile is a lot more complex than Diablo. So this is the sequel coming out, and they show gameplay that literally looks exactly like Diablo 4 that I'm playing right now. In fact, the character... We're shooting Chain Lightning, which is my Sorcerer build in Diablo 4. Okay, so it's it's a Diablo, I to do like... A celebratory bubble blow. And now we're and gonna blow bubble. <laughs> this shit fucking sucks. <laughs> earlier, so ladies and gentlemen, it's bubble oh, time, man. baby. Thank and you. he's doing it in the middle of, like, a new segment. Does he expect to, like, attract new viewers with this? And I know this happened during a live stream, but... Again, 
Who's gonna fucking see this? Like a random dude. Imagine you're a random dude and you stumble upon this. And you're looking at this. A dude who can barely open his mouth with like the rat teeth full on. And just spraying around with a bubble gun. Start up. Haven't done a bubble gun in a while. I figured I'd do bubble gun today considering the- Yeah, and the, the, the bubble is gonna get everywhere. Everything's gonna be covered in soap. Nasty. Street Fighter 6 X XO Pro. Oh, no, fuck this. This shit is boring. I already forgot what happened to the, the other ones. Xbox Starfield. I think there was a yeah, Starfield rank. About that event. However, four rant, more big excuse events me, happened, one of these. including an Xbox uh, showcase, Starfield showcase, Ubisoft forward presentation, Ubisoft. and Capcom showcase. Rather than me do live reacts to all of those, which if I actually had would have taken upwards of four or five hours, I've decided to do one video that will summarize everything I thought about those shows right now and give you my recap reactions to all of them. Now, this video will absolutely positively not talk about every single thing that happened during those events. But if you're interested in the things that interested me, if you want to know my takes on the things that I thought were the biggest announcements during the shows, that's the purpose of this video. Rather but maybe if there was some games moment. that actually came out from these, uh, and we can see if he was right or wrong. Get this one done in roughly about a Very half an hour or so. We'll see how that goes. Very Thank you for watching. <clears throat> As always, I'm all ears, and I want to hear your opinions. What do you think about all the things that were announced during these four big events over the weekend? Please let me know in the comments, all right? Without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with the Xbox showcase that happened. And I have in front of me the listing of, like, all of the games that were actually talked about and announced during this showcase. Now, first of all, I'm just going to tell you, we're going to skip Starfield because I'm going to have a whole segment talking uh, about I haven't Starfield. seen the new snow white previews where the dwarfs are gone that's very interesting i wonder what they're gonna replace them with animals maybe myself are they gonna retcon the whole snow white after the, the end of the they should make them normal sized so they're not ableist or discriminatory that that would be hilarious if they, they just make them like normal height people the xbox event here so therefore there's no reason for me to talk about starfield but then it would be very sexual wouldn't it She's, like, living there with, like, seven dudes. I'll talk about that at length in a moment. I don't know. Well, kind of going through each game that was presented. I'm thinking all, too much. Forza Motorsport. Sadly, I'm not a sim-style racing guy. <laughs> a sim-style racing guy. Gran Turismo or Forza Motorsport. If this was Forza Horizon, I'd be more interested in the arcadey open world aspect and the silly things you can do in it. I just, it doesn't appeal to me. It looks good. I know it has massive amounts of accessibility thanks to Super Blind Man's uh, involvement. However, uh, yes. I am he was driving the car. Not interested, and therefore, I really have nothing to say. He's not interested. Um, Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. All right. Here's the thing <clears throat> I'm excited for it. I actually really liked uh, Hellblade 1, Senua's Sacrifice. It blew me away. I didn't think it was going to be that good. And when it came out from a relatively you know, smaller group of game devs, you know, Ninja Theory and everyone doing this game, um, I really loved it. The graphics were great. The gameplay was interesting. The story was confusing, but riveting. This the story was confusing, but riveting. That, that's that's great. Years. They but it, it's not like he's wrong. He to show no gameplay again. And okay. I will say this. I'm upset that they want to announce and or promote games, but to this day, they don't realize that we want to see the game. I don't want to see a cutscene from the game, which is literally what they did. They selected a random cutscene from this game, played it for like four minutes, and that was it. Well, guess what? That didn't help me at all to know what this game is, nor did it really give me any information about exactly when it's coming out. No solid release date. So with that, I was just kind of like, not interested. I want When you give me more information that's concrete, then I'll be interested. Right now, I'm not going to even worry about the sequel. I hope it's good, but you didn't present anything of substance, so it kind of was a waste of time in my opinion. Fable. You want to talk about a waste of time? Oh, Fable. Fable presented a three to four minute long story-based trailer. Okay. Essentially they did have gameplay, though. Or at least, like, gameplay-looking trailer. A hero who was a female heroine okay. climbed a beanstalk. And basically, this is supposed to be a classic retelling of Jack and the Beanstalk with British humor. So the giant at the British top of the humor. is actually like a nerdy-looking black guy who's a farmer who literally okay. is talking about, ah, those heroes and all their combat and violence. It's all about, I'm a farmer. I'm non-violent. I'm trying to solve the world's food problems. But then this tiny heroine shows up, and it shows them kind of like chasing and fighting each other. And at the end, apparently, she beat him because it shows his broken glasses, and that's the end. So... 
What exactly did we just see? Did this have anything to do with the game? Well, there was no gameplay. It was just but, a cinematic, as if we were watching an animated movie. But did, does it have anything to do with the game, or is it just? Didn't they also have like a gameplay trailer where it showed the the character like throwing a bomb and then it blows up? It looked pretty cool. Just an I don't know what he's crying about. It was like a three minute, four minute thing. What the game will be? I don't know. Literally a waste of time. A I understand waste you're time. making a new Fable game. You could have just said Fable now in development. Instead of but then he would be crying about that they didn't say anything else. A three minute, four minute story trailer that we have no idea how this ties into the game. So, again, I hate to say it, when they're going into showing off these games and all they're showing are cinematics you know, or story based elements and not showing you the game, I feel like it's a waste of time. Sadly, that felt like a waste of time to me. Okay? Um, Avowed. This is the new RPG Avowed. coming from Obsidian. You know, a lot of people have crapped on this game. I don't know why. I think it looks good. Sure, it's a little bit on the cartoony side when it comes to the graphics. But yeah, I can't like say I care about it too much. Obsidian, Obsidian game. Or, or that other one, uh, what was it? Legends of Avium or something like that. Something of Avium. Instead of it being like Fallout, it looks like New Vegas. Mm, it's suspicious. Kind of like In a very specific way that I can't quite explain. Version of Skyrim. I dug it. I like the idea I dug that it's it. the world, but everything's getting corrupted, and so there's there's new demons and, 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 you know, corrupted versions of animals and things you'll be fighting. It looked colorful, which I liked. You know, compare that to Skyrim that's not colorful at all and kind of gritty and realistic. This seems like a more colorful, you know, magical world to be in. And again, if it's made by Obsidian, looks good to me. While a lot of people online are hating on this game, I'm shocked. I, I don't know what they're hating on. What's it that? Wait, wait. Let's, let's see what people are hating on. Was it Avowed? Avowed. Uh, Right, okay, let's look it up. Um, official gameplay trailer. I think that's going to be pretty educational. Educational style. So explore the living lands, a mysterious island filled with adventure and danger. As an envoy of Adir, you are sent to investigate rumors of a spreading plague. Sounds good. Let's take a look at the gameplay. Sent here to the living lands by an emperor who couldn't bother to come himself. To investigate some plague that seems to be corrupting okay. our very souls. You want us to trust you. But the truth is, you scare us. The way you fight, the power you wield. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can't say I'm blown away by it. I can't say this is making me want to buy it, really. Here to save us. destroy us all right yeah well it looks like a skyrim-esque experience and unless it's better than skyrim it's gonna have a very hard time justifying its existence more or less i mean not not that much but yeah it it, it has pretty high standards for it and um it's from obsidian right is it? I, th I think so. And I wasn't really impressed by their previous game. Obsidian, yeah. Which was uh, The Outer Worlds. I thought it was pretty mediocre, honestly. So, uh, I can't say I'm looking forward to it. I don't see people massively shitting on it because it looks kind of mid. Nothing too offensively bad. Nothing too broken, probably. Because it's going to be by Obsidian. It's a studio with a proven track record. So, I, I don't think it's going to be too crazy. Um, I'm expecting an Outer Worlds, but Skyrim this time. And uh, big ups to Pow Poo for two months, who says uh, is freeloading like Derek. Big ups from Italy. Big ups from Italy. Is it like 40 degrees there as well? To me, if you're an Obsidian fan, why would you not have liked that Avowed tra uh, you know, I say trailer, but it actually had gameplay in it. It showed you how the game will play, and it looks like Skyrim Plus. Skyrim is Plus. Is it ultra complex? No, but I don't think we're looking for that. We're just looking for a cool open world. 
<clears throat> Obsidian RPG, which we haven't had one in a long time, right? <clears throat> so that looked good to me. Elder Scrolls Online, Necrom, I couldn't care less. Yep. I don't play Elder Scrolls Online, so zero interest. Uh, Towerborn, I'll be honest with you. There Towerborn. were a few games that all seemed very similar in these presentations. And yeah. This one did not stand I, out. For I don't me. know I don't what remember, that is. So I'm just going to skip it. Uh, Clockwork Revolution definitely reminded me of Bioshock Infinite, a steampunk futuristic world that's really a dystopia because there's people in power kind of uh, the people. Him talking about um, video games, just the, comparing the, video games to each other. It's, it's so tiresome. There's time manipulation, so you could go back in time and change the past and then go back to the future or I guess the present and see how it affected things. Um, but then it doesn't always work because I guess what happened is this protagonist who I guess is supposed to be like a, you know, a, a black woman goes back a black woman wait 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 what why did we have to add this this unnecessary irrelevant detail to everything hey he's like a black woman i guess oh why not just a woman oh my god i changed it. i made it worse does it matter is it a i'm very so confused kind of interesting maybe the plot will be he jumps several times trying to find different elements to see watch out this civilization. it's a black woman she's, she's gonna right. feel the black first person, right first person shooter but oh, at the same man. time it's a ways out don't know much about it looked decent could be interesting um so there's a game called path of the goddess and the I have no clue first what that is. is in japanese i can't read it so i don't know what it says it's it's some word in japanese some word um, here's the thing so wait wait Let, I, i'm curious let's see what that is path of the goddess path of the goddess okay so it just kind of says path of the goddess oh uh, kunitsugami i guess but he could fucking read it. He reads all that shit. I'm just showing this game. And the graphically, it looks beautiful, right? It's like Japanese culture, kind of like, again, feudal times. Think Feudal style Neo. culture. Think Wolong. Think right? Neo. I guess, Wolong, I guess you could say is Chinese. But still, you know what I'm saying? Like that feudal kind of era, beautiful, outdoorsy <laughs> kind of stuff. Think but this different yokai game. Yokai demons. So again, kind of like Neo. Yokai demons are taking over. And it shows that there's some warriors, but then there's people who are using like magic and stuff to fight them. It's great, but watching this trailer, I couldn't actually tell you exactly how it's going to play. Is it going to be like Neo, like an ultra challenging game? Is it more like a, a, a more arcadey action game where it's not as difficult and it's more interesting in regards to like platforming or something? I, I don't know. It wasn't really explained, nor did they really elaborate. Just, I think they were trying to sh like show you some fancy visuals, but I'll be honest. After having played recent games like Wolong and Neo, it didn't appeal to me as much. It's kind of like you're late to the game, Capcom. If you're making this game and you made it like before or at the same time as those, maybe. But we already played games that were kind of like this recently. So it didn't really impress me that much. Maybe as we learn more, it will. But it just didn't blow me away. Okay, next. Talk what about something that we've heard. Was the announcement of Metaphor. Metaphor. Day Fantasio. The new IP, get this, from the makers of Persona. Wow. They're actually making a whole new franchise. And Another game that he's going to spend like 500 hours in and he's going to complain about. Because his Persona playthrough has like probably like 450 parts or something like that. It's insanely long. But back then he was getting enough views not to cry about tips. So now good luck nowadays having a 400 something part video series. Uh, especially once you put it on the late streams. It's going to be constant pity parties, begging segments, and crying. Uh, which is, uh, in a way, kind of exciting. This seems to be interesting because it's fantasy-based. But I guess what they're saying is, I guess, creatures are trying to invade Earth. They like, like they're saying that Earth is like paradise. And so fantasy creatures are invading Earth. But then there's like RPG elements that are more fantasy and magic-based. It, it looked unique. And it was very, of course, very anime-ish because it's, it's you know, the makers of Persona, Atlas. But it looked good Okay, to me. We, we got it. It has the production value of, say, And Persona. also, like, a, a pet peeve of mine outside of this screenshot right now that I'm, I've stopped on is when somebody who's been in, in video game, uh, I wouldn't say journalism, but media for so long, and instead of saying developers, he says makers. It's kind of amateurish to me. I don't know. For all the prestige that he puts on what he does, when he says stuff like that, he seems like some some amateur. He seems like my dad talking about video games. Five, I think this would be an outstanding RPG. I'm actually happy they're doing something different because everyone's like Persona, Persona, Persona. To see that they're actually going to make a different franchise is a good thing in my opinion. Um, South of Midnight, I don't even know what it is. I guess it showed someone playing a guitar and a demon came out of like the, the bayou or something. I don't really know what it is, so I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws. <clears throat> 
Not going to go into detail about that now. That was more covered in the Ubisoft conference, but I do have a good amount to say about it. Um, Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. Okay, so they're tweaking Cyberpunk. They're bringing back Keanu. They're tweaking. They've got Idris Alba as one of the protagonists. Idris Alba. It's a new plot line involving a mystery. They've got better <laughs> gameplay. All that's Idris great. Alba. If you want to play it? Go ahead. Is he the 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 husband of Jessica Alba? I guess. I'm staying out of this one. Why? Why? Was a huge disappointment for me, but not for the same reasons as most other people. I don't like the gameplay elements nor the world of Cyberpunk. I find the gameplay elements to be kind of trite. Oh. And because there was sexual stuff. There was a full-on, full-blown sex scene from a first-person perspective. That was, uh, I, I would say, when it comes to video games, pretty graphic. So obviously he hated that. And it's, it, of course, the cyberpunk worlds are oftentimes very sexualized. Because, of course, it's the future. And in the future, everybody has sex. Unlike now, when nobody has sex. It's not allowed. And things you've done in other games and sex it's is illegal like i'd much rather play deus x i'd much rather play borderlands than play cyberpunk in addition borderlands is is borderlands I cyberpunk of cyberpunk obnoxiously annoying i don't want to be in a world where every five seconds there's someone saying fuck 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 or someone is shoving a robot penis in my face oh there you go sex the world of cyberpunk and i understand the whole plot is oh everything's been over commercialized that's great, but did you ever figure out if that's fun? To me, it's not. What? I hated Cyberpunk's world. I thought it was very obnoxious. <laughs> Is the Cyberpunk dystopia fun, fellas? Didn't find anything entertaining about it. Is dystopia it. fun? Um, and honestly, I feel like if I bought this expansion, I'd probably, just like the main game, uh, enjoy it maybe 20% of the time, and the rest of the time just be like, oh, it's just more of that shit that I didn't like, so I'm skipping it. If you like Cyberpunk 2077, go for it, enjoy Phantom. You know, I'm, I'm probably going to get it because there's the chance that they're going to add third-person mode, which is going to be amazing, and I'll love it. And also, I haven't finished it once because originally I bought it on the PS4, and then I got about a third of the way in, and then I decided, you know what, I'm going to wait until I get a PS5. And then I got a PS5, and I've never got around to playing it. Whatever so there the you go. it's called, I'm not interested. But I'm, I'm probably going to get it, because um, I'm, I'm hyped for it. Payday 3. It looks like Payday 1 and 2. It probably is and good. And you need friends. If you like that kind of co-op game, I'm not interested. And he don't have friends. Immortals. So there kind you go. Kind of interesting. It looks like Hades, almost. <clears throat> But the premise is that there's 33 player co-op where everyone is fighting in, a, in these rooms like Hades, but you could have up to 33 players at once. Interesting premise. Don't know how that would be implemented. For me, any game with 33 things going on at once is probably going to be a clustered mess and not very discernible what the hell's going on. But maybe they'll pull it off. Kind of interesting. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it won't. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, Flight Simulator 2024. Wow. This actually was interesting because here's the thing. A few years ago, when I got my Xbox Series X, we had the summer of Game Pass. And one of the games I played was Flight Simulator. And even though I wasn't expecting much, man, we played that for, what, two months, three months? And every time that I played it, we had a chill stream where people would pick a new location to fly and tour and, and find out things. And it was a pretty good experience. It was really great late night streams. Now, this new Flight Simulator not only is going to improve upon the graphics and everything, but also is adding all new things. One of the things that appealed to me is skydiving. Imagine now you can skydive anywhere in the world. What if we wanted to skydive into Paris? What if you wanted to skydive into the Grand Canyon? You can do that. You in should. Canyon, apparently. Definitely. That's please, please do, cool, Phil. Opinion. Um, lots of new things added. You know, cargo and VIP missions. I'm not saying that I would do any of those, but it seems like there's a lot of content added to the game. Of course, being that Flight Simulator will be Game Pass is a pretty huge added awesome thing. Looks like it's definitely going to be something that I'd be interested in adding to my repertoire of chill games coming up repertoire um, the, re the, the, the repertoire of chill games i just want to see what a repertoire is because i might be wrong but it sounds like a ridiculous thing that nobody would ever say in relation to games uh repertoire right what does it mean a list or supply of of dramas operas pieces or parts that a company or person is prepared to perform or a supply of skills, devices, or expedients, or broadly used as amount or supply. Well, I guess, I guess, yeah. Expansion. It just sounds weird. To, the, to a flight simulator that's out already. I mean, I'm not really interested. I didn't even see Dune. I probably will eventually. Uh, but I didn't not see really Dune. Appealing to me, but if you like Dune, you'll probably like that. Um, if you like Sea of Thieves or you like Secret of Monkey Island, they're doing a collab. And it's, probably, it's really neat because, you know, I've played Monkey Island. And 
you're essentially now in the world of Monkey Island first person with modern graphics. It's no longer a 2D point and click adventure. It's an actual game that you can explore the world of Monkey Island and all the people who are in it and all the locations. Like, they walk right into the bar from Monkey Island, and it's cool because the guy's spinning on the chandelier and everything, and actually Guy Brush Threepwood is in it. Hey, you're in the Sea of Thieves, and you're, you like Monkey Island. This is a great collab. Now, I don't like Sea of Thieves. I'm not going to play this, but I actually um, appreciate it. It looks like they put a lot of effort into it. Um, Fallout 76's Atlantic City expansion, I don't give two shits. How many expansions they make? <laughs> it still sucks. I'm not interested. It still sucks. How do you know it still sucks? He, he's never played it. He's never actually played it. Which is pretty fucking ironic because the game isn't all that bad. City Skylines 2. It, it was absolutely disastrous when it dropped and it got its fair share of, of toxicity and valid criticism thrown its way. Absolutely. But now it's, it's pretty playable. I don't give a fuck about it. It's fucking die shit. It's fucking trash. Could be good. Fucking idiots. I've heard great things about City Skylines 1, but I never really got into city sim games like that. Uh, maybe when it comes out, I'll give it a look because it is going to be a Game Pass game. So, looks good. If you like that, it's good news for you. And Perso Okay. I, I, no, he's uh, he's never playing City Skylines. Come on, man. He's going to make a city that is just four blocks that just connect each other. Just four straight lines. And then he's going to complain why his city is full of crime and whatever when he doesn't make a like a police station or something. It's going to be a disaster. I don't even know why he's even caring about this. The city planner games take somebody who's actually good at them to be interesting. Or at least somebody who actually cares about making something fun. And not just a dude that just reads chat for people to tell him what building to build. In Minecraft. We're not even talking about other games that take more effort. He's talking about Minecraft. Silly. One of three reloading confuses me. And here's why it confuses me. <clears throat> I can't figure out if this is a full on modern remake or all they did was give it a facelift with better graphics, but the gameplay elements will be the same. And here's why I say that Persona 3 is a great story. Persona 3 has great music. Persona 3 at the time had actually really good graphics. But Persona 3's gameplay is a slog, it is a very monotonous very outdated monotonous RPG style game there is a lot of unfair things in that game i mean my god the final dungeon and final boss are absolutely ridiculously some of the most unfair turn-based rpg stuff i've ever seen imagine fighting a final boss for 30 minutes just for the boss to say random effects on your party completely unstoppable and if the roll of the dice is good and it doesn't really affect you you continue on with the fight and if the roll of the dice is bad your healer's paralyzed, can't do anything. Your other characters are are confused or whatever. Screw. Start the fight over. And you could replay it a million times and always get randomized. And sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. There's people who could beat that game on the first shot and people who could take 27 hours to beat it. The final boss is that random. So, that's so what I mean. Like, if they add critical quality of life improvements to Persona 3 to make it a more modern game, I think the Reloaded Edition could work well. If it's just a facelift, to have modern graphics and new voice acting, but the gameplay elements are identical. I think a lot of people are going to be pissed at that game. So I guess we'll see. Some people have already asked me, will I play it? I don't know. I already played through the original. It was very frustrating. I don't know if I want to play it again. They're also making a Persona 5 Tactics game. And honestly, I'm probably not interested. Um, you know, Persona 5 is a great game, but I don't really feel like going back to that world just to play a Tactics version of it. Just being honest. Uh... The new Like a Dragon was announced, but everyone was confused because no one knew what the hell it was. It's called Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, and the entire trailer is Ichiban, who is the protagonist of Like a Dragon 7, nude on a beach, and it's not in Japan. It looks like Whoa, it's in America. crazy. Or I should say the United States. That would be pretty fun, Ichiban though. get to America? Where Take him to clothes? the U.S. What is going on? That's all they show. And like I said, I mean, that's kind of funny, but at the same time, honestly, I wish they had given something more of substance. Why not tell us a little bit about the gameplay elements or whatever? Well, it's a reveal trailer. So, I'm interested. Obviously, I love Like a Dragon. I love Like a Dragon 7 when it went to RPG mode, but I wish that there was more substance here. Overwatch 2, I don't give two fucks. No one else does either. No Everyone one gives a fuck. This thing. No one ever gave, gave a fuck. PvE content that they literally had just said there wouldn't and be. And this is, bro, and this is why nobody fucking dollars. respects his dog shit fucking opinions. Because I agree with him, right? I don't care about fucking um about uh overwatch 2 
And I think they messed it up totally with the, the way that they released the game and all that shit that they did. Right? But he's fucking... Like, look at the way that he expressed his opinion, right? I don't give two fucks. No one else does either. Everyone online is clowning this thing. I guess they announced there's going to be PvE content that they literally had just said there wouldn't be. And now right. they're charging $15. Like, bro, I agree with you in principle, but you're so fucking hateable in the way you express your opinion. I want to disagree with you. I literally want to. You're making it very hard for me not to disagree with you. For it, no one cares. The game is dead. Fuck Overwatch. Um... <clears throat> Still wakes the D. Looks like this is a game where you're in first person exploring an abandoned or perhaps destroyed oil rig. And it reminds me of like Subnautica, but it also reminds me of like a first person horror game. Can't really put my finger on exactly what it is. Looks like it could be all right, but it might be one of those games that people also find incredibly boring. Dungeons of Hinterburg. Interesting because it looks like you're realistic. Like you're riding a woman riding a bike or whatever, a girl riding a bike. But then all of a sudden she's in a dungeon and she's solving puzzles and she's fighting enemies. But then she's back in town and she's like doing normal stuff again. So maybe the, the premise is that she's in her town, but somehow she has the ability to see hidden dungeons and creatures or something. Looks like it could be all right. It looks like kind of an indie title. And then there's one called Juzant. I don't know what the fuck that is. I guess I missed it. So, Juzant? Out of the Xbox <laughs> showcase. All right. There was some good I mean, stuff, sure. I would say. Um, I'm definitely interested in... Uh, avowed the clockwork game looked good um uh, metaphor looks pretty good a new game you know okay so but you, i'll talk about you know you just you that. just talked about all um, that 33 immortals maybe flight simulator 2024 looks pretty good um a few things there and of course like a dragon a few things there look interesting to me now let's talk about starfield <clears throat> my god what an improvement from what they showed last year which was a joke like last year's presentation of starfield nothing was impressive the game looked poor um, didn't look unique at all. It looked like it was a combination of Fallout and No Man's Sky taped together. I am happy to say this yep. very lengthy Starfield presentation showed a lot more than that. The graphics look a lot better. The gameplay looks better. All right. They talked about so much stuff in this. I mean, I really, it would be hard for me to cover it all. You know, 1,000 worlds. That was the key thing everyone took out of this day. There's 1,000 worlds to explore. <clears throat> that sounds like bullshit to me. What um, I think it is, yeah. there's 1,000 places you can land or go to. Okay. But likely, 900 of them are empty. You yeah. understand? Likely what they're doing is they're counting every single asteroid and every single moon as a world, which they're not. I think that's fake. They should have said, oh, oh my like god, interactable environments, but they shouldn't have said 1,000 worlds. That sounds like bullshit. So imagine you go to the solar system, right? Well, what's in there? Oh, he's so fucking obnoxious with this. Like, did someone really expect a thousand planets or space space bodies where you could land and it would have tailored custom style content that is meaningful on each? That's just unrealistic. Nobody thought this would ever be a thing. And when they say there's a thousand worlds, you assume they're saying there's a thousand places where you can land and do stuff on. And common sense tells you that it's not all going to be custom and tailored. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and maybe... They probably have some hopefully advanced systems for generating the content on those planets so they can feel interesting and fresh. So it's not like one uh, like No Man's Sky where uh, after like 60 hours of playing the game, every planet is just the same. But like it's almost like he's taking what they they're saying literally and then he's getting salty that it's not literally exactly like that it's like he's so gullible he's such a consumer argue the sun and maybe the human and now when he's saying stuff like that it he's saying it like he he broke the code he figured it out nobody else figured it out they're all gullible i figured it out that they can't physically have 1000 custom planets Moo. So they must be lying locations but they'll probably say oh there's like 50 what how could there be 50 in the solar system oh every little moon counts and every little asteroid counts because you could actually go to them yeah but is there anything on there probably not a mineable resource that's it so i think that's what they're doing they're doing that old bait and switch where they're going to say way more and then technically on a technicality technicality later they'll be like yeah well technically there is even though you know you can't do anything with all of them right but anyway the idea of open galaxy exploration is very interesting. I hope that there's meaningful content, at least in each system. There's a few planets that will have like a town or something to do with missions or the like. 
and it's not just like fetch quest repetitive boring shit but something unique that would be nice um crew members seem interesting but i i would hope that crew members would be more like companions in fallout or you know like meaningful companions in say skyrim meaningful. or Elder scrolls i don't want them to just be oh they're a crew member who you know they're, they're they're on your ship and they run your ship and that's it i want them to be able to go out and have missions with me and have there's probably going to be both meaningful quests so i hope that that's the case it looks like that's what they're going for um <clears throat> like honestly of everything that they showed it looked pretty good like now it's funny because my first thing I said last year was it looks like No Man's Sky. But now you look at it like, actually, it looks like what No Man's Sky was supposed to be and didn't live up to. And that actually is... You mean what it is now? But he wouldn't know because he hasn't played it since when it came out. Just like Fallout 76. Pretty big potential. If this actually is what No Man's Sky should have been when it releases, that would be amazing. Now, the one major thing that must be addressed before we move on. 30 frames per second on console. Yeah, a lot of yeah, people that's pretty weird. They interviewed Todd Howard after the presentation. By the way, during the presentation when they showed combat, the combat looked a little wonky. What I mean by that is it doesn't look like the enemies do much. They're all humanoid. There's there doesn't seem to be much like in the realm of variety of enemies besides the you know creatures that attack you on the planets. But it seems like everyone's humanoid. No one's an alien race. It's all you know humans attacking. But they don't look like they do much. They look pretty stupid. Like they just kind of stand there. Like one guy's like, oh, I like to jetpack above them and throw down mines. Why do they not move? And then it shows him jetpack and blow, just tossing mines. They all look up and get blown to bits. It's like you know, he's he's right about this, and uh, it's about time that with all the talk of AI and the AI being a thing and being so crazy and everybody using it, Chat GPT shit like this, it's time for AI in video games to be a little more sophisticated than what it has been for the last fifteen to twenty years. Because that shit, especially in in single player games, it adds a whole layer of of realism and immersion when somebody behaves the way they're supposed to behave instead of like a stupid empty shell like you're playing a ubisoft game like you're playing assassin's creed and those all those enemies they act like there's nobody there and it makes it feel more empty than if you're playing a game like i don't know let's say red dead redemption 2 when people react physically in a way that they should react in real life and to some extent if every enemy in the game is a dunce, it's going to be pretty boring, no? And pretty repetitive and pretty grindy and not very fun. So I hope that's not the case. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure in Starfield it's going to be the case. The AI is, is probably going to be pretty bad. When they were fighting, every time they fought, the frame rate dipped in the presentation. And, yeah, Todd Howard came out after the presentation and said, Listen, we, want, we don't want to sacrifice the fidelity. We don't want to sacrifice what we're trying to do with this game. So we're locking it at 30 frames. It's like, hey, Todd. Hey, Todd, did you watch your own presentation? It didn't even stay at 30 frames. It dipped below. Here's the thing. The game is very ambitious. Looks like with the shipbuilding, the crew, the world exploration, and all of this stuff coming together. It looks like it could be an amazing game. But it may be that they bit off more that they can chew, and maybe they've been a little bit overambitious. Maybe that's why they can't get this game to run smooth, and that's why they're locking it at 30 frames or lower on console. Personally, as long as the game performs, as long as you can have fun with it, and it's playable. Not that every time you fight, it chops, and now you die a million times because the game's choppy. This, as long as you can have fun with it, is completely worthless thing to say, because for different people, it's different amounts. Like, for me, frame rate isn't really that much of an issue. I'm not really on a, a, a 60 FPS kind of guy. I can play on 30. It doesn't really bother me that much. Some people get bothered by it. For them, it's pretty important. So, yeah, it, it really varies. So... Him saying like this, it really doesn't make much sense. Shit, and it's not fun. That as long as it's fun. I don't know, man. Some people think being having their ball stepped on is pretty fun. I'll be okay with it, but it could be an issue. And I'm very curious. This could be a make or break situation for Bethesda, who've had several underperforming, underwhelming games in a row now. And you don't want to have another Fallout 76 debacle. You, you want to have a great new IP and a great new game here at launch. So I hope that lives up to expectations. Personally, I am feeling way more positive after the Starfield presentation. I think they did a good job with as much as they could without revealing too much about the game. And I'm confident, more confident in it that it's going to be an entertaining game come September. There you go. And also, now I mean, on to <clears throat> Ubisoft. It, you get it on Game Pass. So you're not really sacrificing all that much. You're going to see the reviews come out like a, a probably a week before the game actually comes out. I don't know when the embargo is. 
So you're going to have plenty of time to see if it's really worth your time and your money and your energy. And if it's not, then maybe you can wait down the road for like a 60 FPS patch or, I don't know, some updates that are going to make it worth it. So it really isn't that big of a deal. Forward. Star Wars Outlaws. Let's talk about that first. Brand new female protagonist. I forgot her name. Is she like black? Cara Vess or something like that. Oh, no, um, she's white. Reminds me of like if she was black, you would say so. She's wheeling and dealing. She's making she's she's wheeling and dealing. She's making deals that, you know, uh, against like the Rick law Flair. to try to get items in and out. And it shows, you know, the, the original game opens up with her sneaking around like a hangar full of alien enemies. And it looks like it's a cover-based shooter, but her gun will change properties to do things like break through shields and stuff like that. But there's definitely a stealth element, and there's definitely an element where you control your little assist character whose name eludes me now. It's a little creature that you can tell to do stuff. Go push a button, go distract an enemy, go attack, and then I'll shoot them from behind when you're attacking and stuff like that. So it's, in, it's interesting in that regard, but didn't look anything like blew me away combat-wise. No, but what was cool was when all hell broke loose in this hangar that she's in, she has to escape. As she's escaping, she jumps on like a speeder bike and drives away, and she drives right into a town that now she's going right into another mission. She goes, talks to her companion, who's a robot, I guess a droid on her ship, and then she goes into a bar, she makes a deal with someone, the deal goes wrong, now the Empire wants her. Bro, this is fucking escape. terrible, dude. I hate these recaps. I hate them. Because it's just telling you what happens play by play. It's not actually commenting on the game and how you feel about it is just like well, well this happened and then i the saw plan. this happen and then this happened this is the, the super blind man commentary there's an enemy she rushes to the Come ship on. she takes off you now can do better space, than this space combat the whoa Africa, space flying her ship shooting the, the empire until finally she gets an opportunity to hyperdrive out of there that looked cool right i don't think we've actually had a star wars game like that where you had that level of controllability before controllability first star wars open world game can you try saying control maybe just control game a what about lego star wars the skywalker saga from like last year and it started thinking about it I was like they're actually right that was open world <laughs> it actually was i mean not to the extent that this game looks but it kind of was so this technically is not the first open world star wars game but anyway it looks good to me now the one thing that i have to say that's a criticism why is every star wars game these days set in the timeline we know of either the Clone Wars, the prequels, or the three movies that are the, you know, the original trilogy. Why do we not have movies that are, or excuse me, movies, games that are set in original timelines? For example, Knights of the Old Republic. You want to know why that's good? It's so early in the timeline, anything can happen. You don't know what's going to happen with who. You don't know who's going to survive, who's going to die. That's cool. In this timeline, for example, likely there's going to be cameo appearances in Star Wars Outlaws. How much you want to bet there's going to be Chewbacca or Darth Vader or someone from mainline Star Wars will show up. I mean, hell, in the trailer, they showed Carbonite captured Han Solo. And it's like, I'm so tired of that. Why can't we do something else with Star Wars? Why does it always have to be the because, bro, because this whole fucking franchise at this point is all about references and saying people that you already recognize in the ATSTs, and it's like, dude, I recognize this, so I'm excited. And they can't take that big of a risk because that shit takes a lot of money to produce. And if it flops, they're gonna lose a lot of money, and it's a huge franchise, so they're, they can't take that risk. At some point, they will, when they run out of stuff to do, and things to reference, but right now, they can't. Uh, also, the, a big deal breaker for me is that it doesn't seem like you got lightsabers in this game. And I'm not much of a Star Wars fan, so, unless you got lightsabers, you, you don't got me on board. Because, like, the new Jedi Survivor game, that shit got lightsabers, and I like it. And it even got multiple lightsabers. You can have two, or you can have, like, the, the double-sided one. You know, you can have a lot of lightsaber stuff. And in this one, you don't. And it's also made by Ubisoft. And they are notorious for having suspicious games that end up not being what was advertised. The same timelines, the same characters. Like I was just playing Star Wars uh, Jedi Survivor and there was a big cameo appearance and I was like, I didn't care. And everyone's like, you don't care that that person showed up in the game? I'm like, no, I'm tired of it. Just do something different and original. This is cool that it looks like it is going for that. Just, you know, I hope it doesn't tie in with the, the mainstream Star Wars plot. I'd rather have it be its own periphery thing. Bro, I hope so anyway, you guys are not looking at the gameplay. No, no, it's Shit early is on. It looks good to me. Um, <clears throat> Assassin's Creed Mirage, wow. They showed a wow. big, several minute long. What was a wow gameplay, about this? Uh, example of this? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll still probably end up playing it. I've played all the Assassin's Creed's. I, I like them and they're fine. 
But whenever I hear somebody say wow about an Assassin's Creed game, I'm very suspicious. And I look at them weird and I think some things about them in my brain. Good. Looks like a combination of the classic Assassin's Creed games with more modernized gameplay. Like the no. hawk is still in it, but now no. the hawk or you can teleport. interrupted and then you have to actually take out like a, a, a sniper. And then once you take out that sniper or, or look out, then the, the bird can fly back in and mark all your targets again. I like that, you know, take out a target. Now you got to run. You're on the run trying to escape and get to the safe house. So this is like the whole thing about Assassin's Creed and people jerking it off for going back to its roots. Those roots, they're not enough in in the current in the modern era of gaming that shit is not enough because don't forget you couldn't even crouch up until what uh assassin's creed unity you couldn't even crouch in a stealth game that is not enough the the social stealth and the parkour that is not enough we need more we need something that is gonna push the franchise further and it's gonna reinvent it in certain ways that it needs to be reinvented the combat not very good and the, the last trilogy, not very good either. Yeah, you had more combat options, you had more flexible combat, but not very good. And the one before, not very good either. So they'd really need to go back to the drawing board, stop making a one Assassin's Creed game a year. And with those, because apparently they got like 12, uh, like, like uh, not 12, what am I talking about? It's like a bunch of Assassin's Creed games in development. So if, if they're all based on the older stuff, that we got then we're gonna be stuck in a cycle for a long time with assassin's creed this shit is gonna get tiresome as hell old school assassin's creed looks good and you 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 bet your ass they're gonna milk that franchise for every last dollar for all it's worth i'm actually feeling very confident about this game that it's gonna be a pretty good one when it comes out in the fall so assassin's creed codename j the first ever hey big ups mobile game it's time assassinate World, set in china it's, it's going to be a mobile game, kill. so it's probably a completely worthless moot point, but if you're interested in an uh, uh, Assassin's Creed mobile game, go for it. Uh, Assassin's Creed Nexus looks absolutely terrible. It, they didn't even show any real gameplay. It's basically a VR version of Assassin's Creed made for the Meta Quest. Do you know anyone who owns the Meta Quest? How many rich people the own The Meta shit, Quest. Right? So they're making a game for like 20 people to play. Um, it says you can play as Ezio, Cassandra, or Connor. And it's like, great, but then they show this gameplay, and it looks insanely good. It's like, there's no way this looks like this on a VR headset. They're so full of shit. And I, quite frankly, can you imagine trying to be an assassin in, in a VR headset? You're probably going to be barfing every five seconds. So, don't care about VR. Um, The Crew Motor Fest. This was hilarious. So yeah, it Crew was. Two, it actually was. on from it to do something different. The new thing called the Crew Motor Fest is literally, I'm not exaggerating, 1 million percent a carbon copy of Forza Horizon. He is exaggerating a lot. A festival. Their festival set in Hawaii. Oh my god. You know how every time they do uh Forza Horizon, it's the Horizon Festival and it's set in different locations like Mexico or the UK or wherever the latest one is. It's the same premise. There's a festival going on, there's mini events going on, there's classes of cars that can race against each other. It's the same game. It looks like they literally lifted the whole idea from Forza and said it's ours now, the Crew Motor Fest. The Crew Hey, you like that kind of stuff, but you'll probably like it. But what I thought was funny was they were showing gameplay like DSP recorded it back in the day. So they had it running on like a big screen and just had cameras pointed at it. And that was the reveal gameplay. And I'm watching the premiere and they, they, they just cut to a dude on a stage talking. And then the gameplay runs behind him on a screen. I'm like, dude, I actually want to see how the game looks and not this dude on the stage talking in a very... Uh, hard to decipher French accent because Ubisoft. I do feel like it was kind of cheap that they stole the idea. Um, The Division Ooh. Resurgence. <clears throat> it's hilarious because they show this and everyone's like, oh, The Division is getting new content. No, it's a mobile game. Okay. You don't know that. They show this big cinematic trailer. Were you going like, to be oh, interested if it got new content? Game. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Looks really good. But I got to say, they waste your time by showing a two to three minute long cinematic trailer that's not the game it's literally crazy graphics you know it looks cartoony cinematic stylish they also like showed the game though movies. they showed plenty <laughs> of gameplay oh, here's the game okay it's a more traditional 2d adventure where it plays almost like the original prince of persia games but it's now with time manipulation mechanics looks good like it looks solid it looks really good the combat looks interesting and exciting the graphics look good for what it is and the time manipulation looks fun 
So to me, this looks like a pretty good game. It's a hilarious that this is actually the game they're coming out with rather than the Prince of Persia uh, remake that they said they were coming out with like two or three years ago and it keeps getting delayed and there's no update about that. But now this is coming out. But it looks yeah, good to me and that comes out in January. The, the dudes working on the remake are probably making more Assassin's Creed games right now. Because, uh, I mean, Ubisoft is in shambles. They're they're really They're really struggling. So they need some hits. And Assassin's Creed is a hit. There you go. Just just keep just make more. We need more Assassin's Creeds. Anyway, actually. More. Um, I would say the most shocking thing about Ubisoft Forward was the Avatar game, Avatar for Dears, Frontiers of Pandora, which is basically uh like Far Cry 7. It's literally Far Cry in Pandora. The graphics look stunningly good. It's a good premise because you can ride creatures, like you can have your aerial creature, you can have the ground creature that you can ride around Pandora. You've got hand-to-hand -hand combat, you've got guns that you were trained by the humans to use, but you've also got bow and arrow, a la Far Cry. A la. The gameplay looks very nice. similar to Far Cry. Islamic you segment. Over these human encampments and bases, and you could climb a tower. Oh, you know, you took it over, just like in Far Cry. Um, so if you like Far Cry, and you like Avatar. You're gonna like the Far Cry Avatar really game. Good. Wow. I was blown away. I thought it was really? going to be some crappy third-person action game. Wow. You know. If you like cheese and you like burgers, you would like a cheeseburger. God damn. Thanks, DSP, for all that wisdom. It actually looks like they put some effort combining their engine from Far Cry and trying to make a viable Avatar game out of it. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it might be good. So that comes out in December. I think it's December 7th, and that might actually be on my calendar now because it actually looked significantly good to me. Uh, X Defiant looks like shit. Oh, yeah. It's some Absolutely. kind of stupid, uh, you know, team-based shooter online. They show a bunch of fucking streamers playing it. No one gives a fuck. Looks terrible. Uh, Just like all these other co-op shooters. I don't I like don't it. Know. Probably a waste of my time. I and don't I know. Never and that's, that's the thing. Being so opinionated before a game has actually come out is that it can age really badly. So now probably when the X Defiant game comes out and it hooks up all the Fortnite addicted kids to play it and it's a massive success, DSP is going to look like a clown. And he shouldn't look like a clown because he's the guy who you go to for the gaming coverage, right? He's supposed to look like a professional who understands what he's talking about, right? Even though I agree with him, it, it looks like trash. I, I, I have no intention of in playing X Defiant. It, and just dance 2024 nobody cares so ubisoft forward jo jo star wars outlaws looks great star uh, assassin's creed mirage looks great um the prince of persia game looks good and the avatar game looks good i thought it was a good presentation and now we move on to the final one uh capcom okay Cap capcom Cap. showcase and sadly i hate to say it capcom showcase was incredibly deflating a lot of people saying they shouldn't even have had a showcase i kind of agree here's what they had so that Kunitsu Gami, Path of the Goddess game, they just showed the same exact trailer they had showed during the Xbox event again, and it doesn't look riveting or anything. Again, it just kind of looks like it's going to be a game set in Feudal Japan with Yokai you fight, but it's not clear what it is yet. Um, Street Fighter 6 and Resident Evil 4 VR versions. I don't care. Pragmata, a game that we don't know what it is. It just shows some guy in a, in a, in a, like a robot suit, uh, you know, fighting a bunch of robots in a, what looks like a training room or a danger room style setting. And then the girl is sitting on the floor doing something. We don't even know what. A little girl. And then he picks her up. Girl. And they run out of the room. <laughs> and then they announce the game's delayed. It was supposed to come out last year, then this year. It's still delayed till next year. They don't really know when yet. Um, and that's it. You have no idea what the game actually is. You have no idea what the gameplay elements will be. It's just delayed again. Gee, thanks. That was a real good use of my time. You couldn't have just said it was delayed again. You had to show us this with no gameplay. Um, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective is getting a remake. Um, this is a game that was a mobile, or not mobile game, excuse me, a portable handheld game. I think it was on, like, the Nintendo 3DS, <clears throat> like, a de over a decade ago. And now it's getting a modern remake on consoles. It's from the maker of Phoenix Wright. If you like that kind the of maker, again, mystery with my pet humor, peeve. you'll probably like it. It's probably not my cup of tea, but it was cool that it's getting a remake. Dude, also, this is it. This is it. He found a way to dismiss a game without being toxic. It's probably not my cup of tea, but if you like it... You like it. There you go. Enjoy your time. Uh, instead of being a DSP with all the other games. Nah, I don't care about it. Nobody cares about it. Go fuck it. Uh, fuck yourself, you fucking idiot. Come on. You figured it out. But it was uh, two minutes before the video ends, so it's kind of late. Hollow Justice is getting an Ace Attorney trilogy remastered on console. But when it comes to him having an opinion, yeah, man, you can disagree, but you have to respect my opinion. 
you have to be respectable to him, but he can tell you that nobody cares about the game and uh, it's fucking stupid and he doesn't care. Nobody cares and it should burn in a fire. So no more just relying on, you know, the handhelds. Again, you can play them on a modern console with upgraded HD graphics. Three Apollo Justice slash Ace Attorney games coming out soon. Um, Exo Primal, they showed a lot and they're showing different various game modes. I'll be honest, the game doesn't look half bad at all if you're okay with just killing endless waves of dinosaurs, which is essentially what it is. People who played the beta a few months ago were like, wow, yeah, that's what it is. And it could be a all the meteors playing the, that game are going to be lit. They're hyped up. They already got the pre-order. Give them fun, but understand that's it. Now they're showing they're the really good at it too. story to this game. In addition Former to the, pros. the combat that you're going to be doing. So, hey, it comes out in July. May or may not be good. Not blowing me away. But it's at least something original and different from Capcom. I guess the question is, will it be the addictive hit of the summer, or will it flop and fall? Yeah, that's face? right. The, sure. the this shirt is also too small. He doesn't have shirts that actually fit him. They're either too small or I don't know. They're too small. Looks okay. And then the big thing of the show was Dragon Dog, Dragon's Dogma Two. And the thing is that this one, the the actual image on it is not that bad. The design on it is pretty good. It's just tiny. Finally, they've shown gameplay up. It looks like Dragon's Dogma way better. Like, interesting new elements. Like, you can destroy the environments. Like, like the bridges of the ground around you to create a situation where monsters will fall. They basically said that those pawns, which are the AI-controlled teammates, are now much better. They're more unique. There's a new race that kind of looks like the Khajiit from uh, Elder Scrolls in it. Um, and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And it looks good. It does look good to me. I'm happy they're making another Dra Dragon's Dog one. They say it's four times bigger than the original, which Whoa, is neat. Whoa, it's 16 times really the, the bigger than the original. Ago. Although, right at this point, it's over a decade-old playthrough, so it's kind of hard to say, hey, go watch it, when back then my quality was so shit. But it was a really good one for me at the time. Uh, a unique take on RPG stuff, because it's action-based, where you can jump and scale the enemies and stab them in their weak points to take them down and do fun stuff like that. <clears throat> but, no release date whatsoever, meaning... This thing is not even close to coming out. So the best thing out of their presentation was definitely Dragon's Dogma 2, and it didn't have any information. Yeah, I still need to play the first one. It's um, it, it's a good, a good combat from what I saw. Uh, so yeah, I need to play it. Whatsoever on when the damn thing's coming out. So overall, some good stuff. I would say the Xbox presentation was pretty darn good, with a few good games being shown. All right. Um. Starfield is looking up, looking really positively good. I just hope that it holds to that and doesn't crumble and fall apart at some point because of the frame rate and these issues because they couldn't get it to perform well on consoles, I guess. But overall, looks like it could be a pretty darn good game. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to uh, I forgot to re remind or say the adoring fan from Oblivion that I just finished playing is in this game. Whoa, back crazy. He sounds, he's the same voice actor and everything. It's pretty darn funny. Um... So Starfield looks good, and Ubisoft, some good stuff from Ubisoft, including the Star Wars Out uh, Outlaws game. Uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage is looking good. Oh. A new Apparently, DSP doesn't like the Mario movie. Uh, well, I I'll need to watch his review, but I will watch it at a later date. Because uh, today, I am finished. And he is done with this video, and this video was not very interesting, but at least we talk about some games. And I remembered what kind of games are coming out this year. So I know what to spend money on and consume so that's gonna be it for the stream thanks everybody for hanging out i gotta make a thumbnail that actually fits the stream and uh then i will do something i don't know what but it's really fucking hot and i'm just gonna turn up the fan and point it at my face uh anyways thanks everybody for being here this stream will now forward you to the king and queen of suffering hotline miami with on wpig so enjoy the rest of your existence and peace out, ballers. Bye.